Hello, this is Nicholas Pellegrino, and I'd like to welcome you to the next edition of Movie Prop Modeling. In this tutorial, we'll be modeling another prop from the most famous movie of all time, and the model will be this Rebel Laser Gun. It's a rather complex model, and it has about 40,000 polygons and no sub-patches whatsoever, so we'll be modeling this weapon entirely with polygonal modeling techniques. We've broken up the tutorial into sections, uh, much like the way we have it set up in four different layers right here. Um, and I'm going to work you through each layer, each part of the object. In the first layer we have the scope and scope mount, which we'll be spending most of our time modeling as it is the most complex part of the object. In the next layer, we have the main part, the object, and the barrel. And this is a fairly simple part of the object and probably the simplest of the whole gun. And in the second to last layer is the uh, trigger, which is another simple part of the model. And last is the gun handle, which is a little more complex than the other objects, but not as complex as the scope. Alright, now I'm going to open up all the layers here, and put a zero on the keyboard in the viewport perspective so you can see the whole model nice and close and if you take a look here you'll notice that the different sides of the object each side is different um, on this side of the object we have smaller screws right here and this part the opening to the sort of the inside of the gun is a little bit different if you notice the trigger down here there's a, a latch release right here and also the modeling of the actual gun mount is different on this side. If you take a closer look, you can see that this part goes over and this is actually a separate little piece that's getting connected. And on the other side, this is angled. The screw on the trigger is a lot bigger than on the other side. And these tighteners for the uh, scope mount are also a lot larger. There's also a little more detail on this side and the way we're going to model this is with image references and because we have different uh, each side is different we have two different image references one for each side and I already have them loaded in here I'm going to show you the front and this is the one with the more the angled part on the uh, main part of the gun the bigger knobs and the uh, also the larger screw on the handle and the back side with the uh, little trigger latch right here and the smaller part right here and the smaller screws around here and there's nothing right here and we've also got this extra little detail on the main part of the barrel and actually if you take a look normally if you were to take a picture of something on different sides they'd be facing different directions and we have these facing the same way and that's mostly just because when you load an image into the background of modeler and you switch from the right to the left viewport it will also switch the image and I can show you that real quick if I pull up display options go to backdrop bottom right the display options I access using the D key on the keyboard and we're gonna load that back image actually yeah. and we'll do that on that layer and I have it set to uh, a low resolution right now, but that's alright. I just want to show you how this flips. And if we switch it to the left, it also rotates the gun around. So all we had to do to really compensate for that was when we're using each image, we just had to flip it horizontally so it matches up. And they're pretty much exactly in the same spot. There's a little bit of difference, a little bit of offset if you look by like a millimeter but we can adjust that later when we flip over and start working on the other side and I've also included on the tutorial two perspective view images which you can find in the content directory and you can also use those if you have a second monitor you keep them up on the second monitor you can take a look at them and it'll help you out and with the modeling process and if you don't have a second monitor you can just pull it up uh, while you're still modeling take a look at things and see how different they are
Okay, the first uh, section we're going to model is the scope. And we're going to load the image reference for that. So we're going to hit D on the keyboard. And go to backdrop, BR for bottom right. And select the front image. If you haven't loaded it already, you can just go to load image and then select from the content directory. We're going to set the image resolution up to 1024. And we're going to change the contrast and the brightness down. Just pull these sliders down so that we can still see the object, but so it's a lot less vibrant. And that's so we can still see our points when we're modeling and so they, the geometry doesn't blend in with our reference photo. And we're going to click OK. And now we're going to hit 0 on the keyboard while the cursor is moved over this bottom right section and that's going to bring it up full frame and the section we're going to be modeling is just the scope right here and these are the scope mounts which we aren't going to worry about right now until we have this bottom section modeled okay so right now we're going to start laying down points for our lathe because we're going to be lathing this section and if you notice there's a little bit of distortion in the image and that's really not a big deal because you can still sort of tell where all the major nooks and crannies are and this is a little distorted right here but this is straight and you can uh, always take a look at the perspective view photos too to kind of get a look and feel for really how it looks okay so we're gonna hit shift and the plus key and that's gonna bring up our points tool or you can go over to make sure you're in the create tab and just select points and we're gonna be right mouse clicking to create our points and we're just gonna make one down here and just for the assumption right now that this is the center and we'll move that into place a little bit later and make sure we align that but all we really need is one point down here right there to define where the center and the starting point is and then we're gonna create three points right here because we wanna we're gonna separate this lathe from the lathe that we're gonna create for this section right here and that's just because they're two different surfaces and we want to have a nice uh, kind of crease going in between the two and we don't want to have them directly connected so three points right here plus the one on the bottom Then we're gonna come over here on the other side and create three points and then we're gonna create three up here it's a little hard to tell with the mount in the way or these screws in the way but this is just straight across and we're going to create three more points on the other side three down here and we're using three points just to define the curves in the section and right now they don't have to be very precise just because we are just laying down our basic points and then we're going to edit them once they're laid down okay that looks like we've got all the points we we're going to need so now we're going to click on the gray area down right here to deselect all the points we just created and we're going to use control T which is the drag tool which you can go up to modify and click drag as well to get this tool and we're just gonna click on these points and move them into kind of the position that we want them just defining our curves and now since this area is straight we want to make sure we have these points this point and this point making a straight line once we create our polygon so what we're gonna have to do is delete this point select this one copy and paste which is either control C control V on the keyboard or C and V on the keyboard depending on your light wave preferences for keyboard shortcuts and what we did was just pulled, moved it over using the T, which is the move tool, which is modify, move. And we also constrained it. And you can constrain by holding on the control key and clicking. Or what I like to do, if you have a middle mouse button, just hold on your middle mouse button and it will constrain automatically to whatever point you have selected. 
Okay, and now we're going to use the drag tool again and just kind of define that area right there. And we're going to do the same thing up here. Just making it so that we have a nice curve. And since these points are aligned over here how we want them, we can just delete the other points on the other side by selecting them with the lasso tool, just right mouse, the right mouse button, and just dragging, selecting around, and then push the delete the delete key on the keyboard, and delete the points. And we're going to select these other points, and we're going to use the mirror tool, shift V, and just click and drag out a line where the center is. Of course, we didn't get it right on the center, so you can just select the points, hit T for the move tool, and then use the middle mouse button or control click for constraining and just move that into place and since we have the same thing on the other side we can also do this over here and delete these points and mirror these ones over and we didn't get it centered again so we'll just select them and constrain and move them over and maybe we need to move them in just a little bit more Okay, and now we can delete this point right here and once again select this point copy paste T to move and middle mouse button or control click to constrain it over and that's just so that it stays nice and straight and we don't have to worry about any angles and then we're going to use the drag tool again which is control T to just kind of move those into place and same thing up here and since this is part is angled right here we don't need to copy any constrain any points over. And the tighter you move these points in, the more defined the curve is going to be, and the smaller the curve is going to be for the polygon. So actually what we're going to do is just bring these ones in just a little and move it with the T on the keyboard. And delete this back point and we're going to copy and paste again and constrain and bring that over just so we're staying straight and control T drag and this last section is a little more rounded than the rest of it so we're just going to make it a, the points a little more separated and then we're going to delete this bottom point copy and paste and move that down so that this is a straight line and that doesn't need to be centered just yet and we're going to do the same thing on the other side over here with this point. We're going to delete it, take this point, copy and paste, constrain and pull it down. Now we need to figure out where the center is because I like lathing directly on the center line because it's a lot easier, it's a lot quicker than figuring out exactly where by looking at the uh, navigation, figuring out exactly what the coordinates are for your specific lathe. So we're just going to move it down to the bottom line once we figure out where these points are the center of the object. And because of different lighting, you can't really tell. So we're just going to have to guess it. And we've got the point right here right now. So we're going to select these points, and we're going to use the mirror tool to define where the center is. And when we mirror it, these points should ma match up exactly with the bottom point, and then we'll know we have the center. So Shift-V for mirror, and we're going to select make sure we get that point directly in the middle of the tool and click and pull off to the right and as you can see we're off just a little so we'll undo that deselect those points move this down just by selecting it and hitting T on the keyboard and we're going to select the points again and now we're going to mirror from that and we went down a little too far so we're going to undo and as you can see the mirror was also not going directly on the point so I am going to move in just a little, just zooming in, using the tools up on top right here. I'm going to select the points and mirror it again. And there we go. That looks like that's going to be exactly where we need it. So undo. And now we have this point centered, but this one is not. And all we have to do is select the two points, and then we're going to zoom in on this first point since that's the one in the center and we're going to hit H on the keyboard for the stretch tool or you can go to modify transform stretch and we're going to use the middle mouse button 
and click on that point and just pull down just dragging the mouse down and what that's doing is it's also it's stretching the two points to wherever you're clicking and it's because we have the mode on mouse mode and make sure you have it on mouse mode because if you have it in selection mode it's going to stretch from the center of the two objects in, or the two points instead of directly to where the mouse is and that's why we move the mouse directly on that point so now they should be centered I'll undo it really quick and as you can see that point just moved down and now they're in center with each other so now we need to create our polygon which we're going to be using to lathe so we select the points in order in a clockwise direction just going through and making sure we get them all in order and then we're going to hit P on the keyboard to create the polygon now like I said in order to lathe I want to be on this bottom line and since we know this is all proportionately correct all we have to do is hit T on the keyboard and move it down and I can move that out of the way for a sec right now and as you can see those look like they're on the line but we want to make sure that they are in the line for sure so what we're going to do is select the bottom two points hit control V on the keyboard or just V on the keyboard depending on your keyboard layout and Y for the value because we want to define these on the Y axis at zero and click OK and now we know that for sure these two points are directly on that line and because it was so close already we don't have to worry about throwing off the model at all and now we're going to lathe it so we're going to hit shift L to bring up the lathe tool and click directly on that center line we're going to pull up numeric and on the Z axis and everything looks correct and we're going to change our sides to 48 because we want it a little more defined and the center is 0, 0 and then we want to hit 0 again and just to make sure it's 0 on all axes and close out that, put your space bar and now we have our scope and now we need to move this back into position so we'll just pull this back up full view again by hitting 0 key on the number pad and just move that into place where it was before and it looks like we're off just a tiny bit from being centered so what I'm going to do is change the mode to selection which is going to highlight everything no matter where the mouse is clicking and we're going to use H as a stretch tool actually no nope. we're going to use shift H which is the size tool and just click and pull it out just a little oh, undo because actually we have everything in our purport because using the size tool is going to size the whole object and actually we just need to bring it outward this way and not this way so actually we are going to use the stretch tool and we're going to use the middle mouse button and constrain moving in a 45 degree angle just so we get our size correct and now pull this back up by hitting zero on the number pad and now it looks like it's perfect Right, hit zero key again so we can take a look at the object and all views and you can't really tell in any of the photos provided but of course there, this is a scope so it is going to have a lens on the other side so what we're going to do is take these polygons and just select them in order just going around and around just so that we make sure we get all of them and you can also verify that down here under selected 48 and we know we have 48 sides on this polygon or on this object so we know if the, we have all those polygons selected in here and what we're going to do is go up to detail and merge polys which is also shift Z and what this does is since we're working with polygons we don't need to worry about keeping four-sided 
polygon or four point polygons or three point polygons because we're not going to be sub patching anything and it gives you a little more flexibility when using the polygons and that also brings down the geometry it just converted 48 polygons to one polygon and it's also going to be a lot easier for us to add the scope part and what we're going to be doing for that is using the bevel tool so we're going to hit B on the keyboard and we're just going to drag and first we want to round this kind of area just a little and then we're going to right mouse click to create a new bevel and just pull it inward and hit the spacebar and now we have a sort of lens on the end of the scope and the other lens will be part of this section down here which we haven't modeled yet Okay. well first thing we're going to do before we go on to the next part of the scope is we are going to define a surface name so we're going to hit Q on the keyboard and this is, brings up the change surface dialog and we're going to type in the name of the surface and we're just going to call this scope and hit OK and now we also need to create this polygon right here as a separate surface so just click on it if you're in the perspective view um, the best way to click on it is not just use the left mouse I usually use the middle mouse button because then you don't have to click on going over so many polygons so just click that polygon we created hit Q on the keyboard and under scope we're gonna hit lens and then back And now we also want to actually change the surface so we can kind of see a little more what we're actually modeling as far as the actual surface of the object is. So we're going to bring up the surface editor and for me it's control F3 but if you're using 8.0 keyboard defaults it's going to be F5 on the keyboard. And for scope we're just going to change it down to almost a black and increase the specularity and reduce the glossiness and hit smoothing and we can take a look at that and that's about what it's going to look like and that just kind of gives us an idea of what it's actually looking like right now as we're modeling it and then for the lens in the back we can just leave that how it is maybe add a little bit of specularity to it but that's really not going to matter too much right now okay so we're going to hit A on the keyboard to frame all if you've been seeing that, if I'm zoomed in right here and I want to frame the whole object, I just hit A on the keyboard. And if you want to frame selected polygons, you hit Control or Shift A, sorry, and that will frame whatever is selected. Let me delete select those polygons. And now, if you notice right here, since we have smoothing on, which we're going to have smoothing on throughout the entire the entire object, so we have to keep this in mind the whole time, is that because of the small amount of geometry between the sections you notice that this doesn't look perfectly straight so what we're gonna have to do is this is a lot easier to do this afterwards than actually adding extra points is we're gonna knife it and it's gonna define a little bit more or make the areas you know, a little b better looking so we're gonna use shift K which is gonna pull up the knife tool and just draw lines next to every curve that we have. So if I undo it, take a look how that really affected the object and it actually looks a little bit straighter. And we're going to knife it, oh, it's a little too close, right there, right there. And just on every single side in the front, And if you pay attention to the perspective view, you can really see how the the knife cuts are really defining. Oh, actually, I'm going to undo that and undo all of these because we don't need knives in these center parts right here. And if you noticed, it was kind of creating a weird looking dip in there so we're just gonna do it on these sections and then on the inside up here 
and we're going to leave this alone in the center and that way it stays straight and when you're using smoothing there are certain these are just some of the precautions and some of the things you have to do to make sure that it, the model looks correct and it takes a little more time but the model looks a lot better in the end because of it and we're not going to add a cut directly on the end right here because we'll go through so we're going to do it right there and by doing that also it's going to create more of it's going to look a lot more rounded on that edge and actually it almost look like there's a little lip right there which is actually what we're going for and right now I'm going to hit S on the keyboard and just make sure we save it and that's probably <laughs> the greatest advice I could ever give you is to hit the S key as often as you possibly can and continuously save your object because otherwise you the operating system could crash and you could lose your object. I've rarely had problems with actually light wave crashing but when the operating system crashes which seems to happen if you're a Windows user just make sure you save all the time. And there's one quick thing we're going to do really quick before we move on to the other part right here is since we have all these polygons in here as well we're going to select all those on the other side and shift to Z again to merge all those polygons together And now we're going to move on to this front piece, which we're also going to be lathing. So we're going to open up a new layer and just select that, put that first layer in the background. And we're just going to start adding points again. So shift and the plus key. And just one, two, three three a real tight curve right here because we want a nice sharp crease between the two objects where they're meeting up and we're also going to add a fourth just to find that curve a little bit more and then one two and three I'm going to deselect these right now and the actual object goes inward you can't really tell too much but if we look at the object that we have completed there's an inside part plus this sort of bubble and that's kind of the lens and you can't really tell on the outside because the transparency doesn't actually show what through it it just kind of shows that there is something on that it is transparent and we need to model that and we want to do it all as a lathe so we don't have to go in and create a sphere or anything like that so we're gonna zoom back into this using shift A or just A since we have everything selected because nothing is selected and we want to start defining sort of that inward curvature so we're going to create the points and this is where the bubble is going to start and I'm actually going to use the disk tool to create points for that so we make sure it's nice and perfectly round first I'm going to clean this up just a little using the drag tool just once again control T and I'm going to define this just a little better Alright, and now we're going to go to the Create tab and select Disk. And we want to make sure we still have that in the background because we don't need more. And now this line right here we know is the center. So what we're going to do is just create our disk from that center line. And we're going to hit Spacebar and then go into the polygon mode and hit K on the keyboard which is going to essentially just kill the polygon and that's another way of helping you remember is if you kill it you hit K on the keyboard it's just kind of a way to help you remember the shortcut and we're going to delete all these points up to this centered one which is, and then we're also going to delete these points in here oh, undo actually
actually delete that other one. And now we kind of have that roundness defined in here. And it's actually shooting out a little far. So we're going to use the stretch tool and make sure the mode is selected to mouse. And constrain it with the middle mouse button or a control click and pull it in a little. Okay. And now what we also need to do is take this point, copy, paste, T on the keyboard to constrain it, and move it over. And now we want it to be aligned with this one, but aligning it on both axes, we can't really constrain to do that. So we're just going to have to judge the best we can. And this polygon doesn't really have to be too straight, or these two points don't have to be too straight to each other, just because it this is the section that will be covered up. And we could probably go ahead and delete this polygon when we're done modeling anyway. Oh, and there's one other thing I wanted to mention, and that is we still have these kind of floating points in here and I forgot to tell you that every time you merge a polygon when you when we went around and merged the set of 48 polygons for this one it left behind the center point and it did that for both sides so we have two points we're just gonna have to select those and hit the delete key and now those points are gone and they weren't connected to anything and once we, after we merged the polygons it just left that center point in there. Okay, so we're going to go back to this kind of front tip here. And now we're going to select all our polygons in order, or all our points in order, sorry, to create our polygon. Hit the P key on the keyboard. And now we want to make sure we lay it again at the right angle and we want to make sure that we lay that directly on this line and to do that to make sure it's perfect we're just going to pull it back down again to that center line or as close as we can to the center line and then select these bottom points just the bottom two and control V or just V on the keyboard and on the Y zero to set the value and then we're going to use the lathe tool again, which is Shift L. And select right on that middle line. And now, if you don't see a hole right there, then you know you've got it exactly down the center and you don't need to worry about anything. But sometimes, if it's off, like I'll undo it and lay it just a little below, you'll see this hole in there. And that's that would happen if we didn't use the set value key and made sure it was correctly on that line. So if you don't see a hole, that's a good sign. Alright, so now we can just move this back into place. And hit zero on the number pad to make sure we have that full screen. And it looks like we kind of need to pull these points out a little more, so you just let use the lasso tool and select all the points and move them out with the T for move. All right, and now that major part of the modeling right there is complete, and we're going to give this a surface name. So all we really have to do is select a few polygons down here. And then we can use the Select Connected tool, which is Shift in the right bracket. Oh, sorry, just right bracket. So if you just hit the right bracket tool, it will select everything connected to that one polygon. We're going to hit the Q for Change Surface. We're going to call it Scope Lens Front. And actually, that is sort of a grayish white surface. So we're going to pull up our surface editor again, which is either control 3 or F5. Lens front and make it a little white. Maybe a little grayer. Give it some specularity. Reduce the glossiness. And turn on the smoothing. And this is actually transparent too, so we can just throw a little bit of transparency on right there right now. And now you can remember that that part is transparent ok 
Okay, and now the next thing we need to model is, if you take a look here, these kind of screw looking things. And I'm assuming those are just kind of the adjustments for the scope. So we're going to go into a new layer. Actually, before we do that, we have to once again get rid of this extra geometry in here. So we're going to select all those, verify that it's 48, shift Z, and we also need to make sure we get rid of that point in there. So we'll just move that, put that in the wireframe mode, and that way, sure, because if we just select this middle point, it's also going to select the middle one from that sort of circle there. So if you go into wireframe mode you can see it a lot easier and see what's connected and what's not. Just hit the delete key, go back to texture view, and now you can see it looks pretty good. Actually if we're gonna cut this and paste this on the same layer, either control C, control V, or C and V, which is the way I have it set up, which is the original Lightwave setup. Alright, and go to a new layer, set this in the background. And now what we're going to do is create a disk. And we're going to try to put this in the center as much as possible, but we can always just move it around. And we want to create the, kind of the inside part right now. It's a little too big and I'm using the middle mouse button to constrain the size on this to make sure that it stays round or once again to constrain you can use the, the control key plus clicking and that looks like that's the right size and now what we need to do is we're going to define this surface we're going to call this scope nernies and nernies are just little bits that really don't serve a purpose they just kinda are there to look nice. In this case they actually are there to serve a purpose but it's 3D and they don't actually do anything. So we're gonna copy the surface from scope and paste it onto nernies. And now we're gonna take this polygon and actually move it up just a little bit more We can bring this top one in, constraining it, and also delete it because we don't need it. Oh, and now select that polygon, and we're going to use the bevel tool, which is B on the keyboard, and just kind of move it out. We're going to, and then right mouse click once you get it in the place. And right now we're just going to kind of define. We put that extra bit in there just to define that curve along the bottom. And bring it in a little, and right mouse click again. And we want to just bring it straight up this time. And actually, it's a little low res for what we had when we created the disk. So we're going to use a new layer and actually use this as a template right now to change the amount of segments. And we're just going to make a disk again, the same one that we made before. And you can also do that same thing by pulling up the numeric and just going to activate before you actually click anything after hitting disk, and it will make the exact same disk that you had before. And we want to change the sides to 48 because we didn't do that before we started modeling that other section. And we, but we can use this as a template now. Anyway, so we didn't and then use the bevel tool which is B on the keyboard and we're gonna actually make a little better curve this time defining this section alright and you're right mouse clicking between every bevel actually go back and I have to I want to set that curve on the bottom as well Okay, we'll bring it up to the top right here, and then we're going to right mouse click. And define this other curve, right mouse clicking to create a new, sec new section. 
And now we can delete this other one we had in there. Uh, and you see again, we got some problems with smoothing, so we're going to knife it. And see how it immediately took care of that sort of banding that we have up here. And we don't really need to worry about it right here, because actually, you can't really tell this too much in the photo. Uh, maybe if you take a look in the perspective photo, it, there's like a little bit of treading, sort of a little bit of grip on these. And the easiest way to create that is we're going to use the bevel tool. And we're just going to create a small bevel, making sure that we select all these polygons. And there's 48 selected, so we know. And then hit B on the keyboard for bevel. And we're going to do a quick inside polygon right here. And right mouse click, and then do it again and bring it out. and then a right mouse click again and sort of define that and now we have a nice little grip on it and if you want you can add a knife to straighten out that smoothing on that and now we have kind of our top knob which we're just going to have directly going into it and we're not really going to worry about changing the scope object to fit in with it and now what we also need to do is we have one on the side as well so we're gonna copy and paste it hit Y on the keyboard for rotate make sure the modes and mouse go from the center right here and then if you constrain it with the middle mouse button or the control key you can go in segments of uh, from 90 degrees to 45 to 0 pretty easily and we'll just deselect that and take a look and compare that to our other model that we have finished already and there's a little bit of a difference mostly just the size of these actual knobs right there but that's okay it's still pretty close and every object should be different anyway and plus this does still match up with our image reference so we know that's okay alright so we're gonna S on the keyboard and save it and we have the the complete scope of the gun done. We don't have the mounts done yet, but the actual scope is done. So just make sure you hit S on the keyboard to save it, and then we're going to move on to the main barrel. Okay, we're going to start laying out the points now for the barrel of the gun, uh, just from here to here because this back piece is actually a separate piece and if I hit zero on the number pad to expand this viewport and take a closer look this is actually a separate piece from this so we're gonna model that separately and we're gonna make just the, me the main barrel like I said from here and to the other side over here and we're gonna do that the same way we made the main part of the scope so we're going to start laying out our points and we only need to actually really do two right here actually eh, we'll just do three because we do want to go kinda have a nice divot where it meets up with this other piece right here and then we're gonna make three points right here and three right here for this little bit of definition uh, I don't know if you can really tell too much but there's a small divot sort of ring around that section right there and we might need to add a little more points to really define that but we're gonna leave it where it is right now and then on the back side right here 
just putting in three points, one up here, one for the center. and then another one for the center down here and that points tool again is just shift and the plus key okay and now we're going to use the drag tool control T sort of bring these inward and now we need to zoom in here and kind of edit the way we want this actually I think we need another set of three on both sides to get really get a nice definition in there and so the smoothing is displayed correctly and it's not a large divot so we don't really need to go too far down with the points actually that's a little too a little too low so we're going to use the stretch tool, just H on the keyboard, and just pull those in. Yeah, and that looks about right, actually. Stretch tool again, and pull them inward the other way. And now we want to make sure that these points are lining up, this one and this one. So I'm going to delete this point, and once again, select this one, copy and paste, T to move. You can see we are a little off. So I just need to select these other points right here and move them down. And I'll delete these three points and select these ones right here and just use the mirror tool which is shift V and just mirror those over. And that looks good. And now down here on the other side and actually if you notice right here it does kind of go up a bit so if you want you can add a point or two points up on top right there and it only seems to curve up on that top section so you can just leave it like that but that will actually throw off the lathe if we were to leave it like that so right now we're just going to delete those points and we can go back and edit that later and just expand that section upward because we don't want to affect everything on the bottom and that's the thing about a lathe is you can't have any differences throughout the model and this we want to make just a little bit tighter in here and maybe zoom in a little bit more and we also want to make sure that these points are equal with the other sets of points on this other side. So if we zoom in here, I'm going to zoom in kind of far, make sure we're in points mode, copy and paste and move that over, making sure we're constraining. And that is a little bit off and that might be because of the image and the image uh, might be slightly tilted and it kinda looks like it is but we can just compensate for that that's really not a big deal it's it's off only by about a millimeter so that's really not too bad and we can just drag that down and leave it where it is we'll have that extra point in there just for a little bit of definition bring this point in just a little because we want to curve up into this new section and we can leave that. Now we need to figure out where our center is. So we're going to take the point we already have right now as our, and leave that as our center for the, for the time being and give it a test and check and see if that actually is the center. So shift V for mirror and mirror right on that point and actually that's perfectly center. So we'll undo that and now we're going to actually copy and paste that down so that we're gonna have a straight line actually we might wanna select those and move them out it's using the T 
move tool and we're also going to need to define the center point over here so we're going to copy and paste move this point over and this really doesn't need to be straight because we're going to be covering it up with that kind of end cap okay and now what we need to do is since this dark line right here is going to be our center for the lathe we're going to move everything down and lathe it along that center line but first we're going to make our polygon so it'll be easier to move everything around so just select all our points in order making sure we're doing it in a clockwise fashion Of course, if you did do it counterclockwise, you could always just flip that polygon. All right, we have all our points selected. We get P on the keyboard. And now we're going to move it down as close as we can to that line. And then we're going to take these points on the bottom, and we're going to hit Control V or just V on the keyboard for the set value tool, zero on the Y, and now we know it's perfectly in centered. And now we're going to use the lathe tool, which is or, uh, sorry, shift L, and select right on that middle line, pull up the numeric, make sure it's all zero. And actually it looks like we're a little bit off. And we are just a bit I'm going to undo that, uh, and that's because this polygon we created, all the points we created were not completely on center. So actually we're going to use a set value on the, the x-axis of a zero, and that way we make sure that that polygon is created, ex or is exactly on that axis line of zero. And we're going to use the lathe tool again. Go back to numeric. Everything's set to zero. Of course, the z axis doesn't matter too much of where it starts, but I'd like to set it at zero anyway. And now we're going to change the sides to 48. Close that out, push the spacebar, and now we have that section. And we need to move it back into place, so I'm going to hit the zero key with the cursor over that bottom right viewport and just use T to move and move it back up into place and we'll see how this end part looks good that's going to be curving into it just how we need it and now we're going to take a look at the smoothing on this and in order to do that we're going to have to give it a surface name so we're going to hit Q on the keyboard to bring up the change surface dialog and we're going to call this main barrel. Oops. Q on the keyboard to bring up the change surface dialog. And just we're going to call this main body. And hit OK. Okay, and now we're going to bring up the surface editor. So you can either click up here, control F3 or F5, depending on your keyboard layout. And main body, we're just going to copy the surface from scope and paste it onto there. And now you can see the smoothing of the object. And as you can tell, it does smooth out a little bit too much on those ends and that's not as defined as I'd like it to be so I'm gonna go in here and knife it so control or sorry shift K and I'm gonna add a knife right there on that side and a knife right here actually maybe not so far but right here 
and if we take a look at that now that looks a lot better that's a lot more defined and that could use another knife about right there there that looks a lot better as you can see it really brought out if I undo that it brings out even a it's quite subtle it still makes a big difference okay and now we're gonna move on to this sort of tip right here sort of the front of the barrel or the actual barrel of the gun and this is going to be a little bit different than the other ones just the amount of sides that we're going to be using you can't really tell too much here but if I load in the perspective view by going to the image editor and taking a look at the perspective you can see those really jet out those little segments right here and there's actually 16 of them so we're gonna have to make a 16 sided cylinder and make this part separate from this part because we're gonna want a lot more rounding in here and we're gonna want 48 sides so we can close that out and we're just gonna create a cylinder this time or a disk so uh, under create the disk tool and we want to make sure we get it as close to the center as possible so we're going to kind of guess about where the center is and that looks about right and I'm using the middle mouse button to constrain or you can use control and left mouse and we're just going to pull that cylinder out and actually we do need to come in a little bit more with it just because this is the length or the size of the cylinder with the segments so we need to come down a little and when you're using the middle mouse button to constrain it's going to use the default size cylinder and you're going to have to restretch that out but that's alright and we'll go to numeric we'll change the sides to 16 and close that out hit the spacebar okay now we also have to add a little bit of a bevel on each of the ends just so it's going into the other object so select the two end polygons hit the B key for bevel and we're just going to bevel that down actually undo that and if you zoom in you can do it without pulling up the numeric and get a more precise or smaller bevel because that's all we need alright that looks good okay and now we're going to select these 16 polygons and we're going to bevel these. So we're going to do the same thing. Zooming in, hitting the B key for bevel. And the first thing we're going to do is kind of bring it in just a little to define sort of the curve. And right mouse click. And another one. And this will also give us a little more spacing in between each one, which we also need. and then right mouse click again and this time we're just going to pull it out and bring it in just a little just pulling it out a little farther than we did before and we want to make sure that it's about the height if you look right here you can tell what the height's supposed to be and just a little under that because we're still going to add another bevel so right mouse click again and bevel that one more and then right mouse click one more time and bevel it in again. And now deselect those and take a look. And that looks pretty good. The only problem is we don't have enough segments on the sides to sort of defi 
define the smoothing on that. So we're going to add a knife right here and right here. And that also kind of gives us sort of a looking tilt on the sides. And I kind of like that. It adds a little more variation to the object and it looks a little more real because of it. And now we're going to find a surface for this. Okay, so we're going to hit Q on the keyboard and we're going to call it Barrel. Hit OK or hit Enter. And now we're going to bring up the surface editor and just give it our lighter surface. Actually, we might have one. Yeah, so that scope lens back will be about what we need and make sure we turn smoothing on and we'll see how that looks if you go in and take a look right here we have a nice divot in there where we need it and what we can also do is go back to this other model the other side, the other piece, and take these polygons we have in here and shift Z and merge those and that'll get rid of some of the excess and we also need to delete these polygons on the end right here so circle around with that, verify it with 40, there's 48 and hit the delete key and we've also still got that point in there from when we merged it in front, so we'll delete that as well. And now we need to do the tip. And for the tip we're going to be lathing. So we're going to lay down our points. So that's uh, shift and the plus key, or you can go to create and select points. And just right mouse click. About right there and just lay down our points and we'll go and edit these in a sec we just want to make sure we get them in here alright and we're going to maximize the viewport by hitting 0 on the number pad and deselect these and now one thing I like to do sometimes is to create by selecting the points in order and hitting control P and that's going to create a spline and we're not going to actually be using the spline for the actual model but we can use it as sort of a reference in the meantime to tell exactly where the points how the curve looks because if you could see if it's down here or a little off you can really sh see it in the curve so we're going to need to find that little divot right there and this does curve a little so we're going to leave it like that and now we can hit K in the keyboard to sort of kill that spline because a spline is a polygon it is defined as a polygon and now we're going to edit this section right here just using the drag tool, control T and now there's also if you look at the perspective we have a uh, an inside hole and a little bit of a outside sort of bevel and we're actually not going to work that into the lathe and we're going to do that manually by beveling once we've already lathed it. So we're going to finish up by adding our, actually, delete that, copy and paste, and constrain and bring that down, and define our center. So we're going to use the mirror tool again, which is Shift V, to kind of figure out exactly what center is. And actually, it looks like that needs to come down a little bit more. So select it, use T to move and select those again 
Shift V for mirror. And that looks like it's centered. So we're going to delete those bottom polygons, or you could just undo it, or those points actually. And grab that point, copy and paste it over. And this also does not need to be perfectly in line with this one, although I think it actually is. And now we're going to select our points in order. Hit P on the keyboard to create the polygon. And now we're going to move it down to the center, or as close to the center as we can get it. And then select those points. Control V, or just V on the keyboard. On the Y axis, value of 0. Shift L for the lathe tool. And I don't see any holes on there, so that means we've lathed it correctly. Numeric, just double check. 48, 0, 0. Looks good, so we hit spacebar on the keyboard. And now we can move that back into place. And we can use the center line right here across the center line on the other part to define where the center is. Okay, and if you look, that's not very, not as defined as I'd like it to be, or how it should be. So I'm going to add another knife and a knife in back and also one in front. And we're going to give this a surface. Call it barrel tip and open up our surface editor again. And then copy and paste so we have that same texture because it is the same surface. And that's looking good so far. And now we are going to define that sort of tip and that hole in the front where the actual laser comes out of. And what we're going to do is select these polygons going around a circle a couple of times just so we make sure we select them all, verifying that we have them all by seeing that there's 48 and shift Z to merge all those polygons into one. And we have that extra point in there and we can delete actually just that front one right now because we still need to merge the back. So merge those back polygons and delete the point. And another main reason I do merge those polygons right here is because it's a lot easier to bevel than it is to smooth shift. And that's just because with bevel you get inset and a tilt with it. And smooth shift just kind of goes straight out. And with multiple polygons you have to smooth shift otherwise you'll get each individual polygon going off in its own way if you're beveling. So we're going to hit B on the keyboard for bevel. Right mouse click. And then we're going to move it in actually undo, undo again because we don't need to right mouse click actually. Once we hit B on the keyboard for bevel we can just start pulling in our polygons and that's usually for smooth shift you right mouse click right away. Okay so we're gonna bring it down about right there. Actually I think it's a little bit smaller than that. I'm gonna verify that with the perspective photo. Yeah, that looks about right. Maybe just a little bit bigger, so I'm just going to use the stretch tool now, which is H on the keyboard. Make sure our mode is set to selection. And make it just a little bit bigger. And now we're going to use, actually, smooth shift, because we want to define have a little more control than we would with bevel when we're smooth shifting. But you can bevel it if you want. Depends. It really depends on how much time you really want to spend on it. So 
Shift F for smooth shift, right mouse click right away, push H on the keyboard for stretch, and we're going to pull it in just a little. Just a tiny bit, no movement on this side. And then once more, smooth shift, H on the keyboard, and then stretch it in, and now we can start pulling it out. Smooth shift again, so shift F, right mouse click, H on the keyboard, move it in just a little making sure we constrain so that it stays as a circle and doesn't turn into an oval and pull it out to how far that little inset goes and it's not out very far so right there should be good and actually we we just use bevel now so B on the keyboard and bring it in a little right mouse click and bring it in a little more right mouse click again and this time we want to just size it down and not give it any inset right mouse click in again and now we're going to start defining the inside actually zoom in a little so you can kind of see what's going on a little better right mouse click again and define that sort of curve and it doesn't have to be perfect because uh, you will be pretty far away from this section of the model. And right mouse click again, and now we can drag it all the way back. And we'll spacebar and keep that polygon selected and just use the T on the keyboard for the move tool, and we're going to move it back. Just so that we cover it with most, ang most angles, and actually we can pull that back a little farther. And if you notice too, actually this inside, if we look at the perspective, is like an orange. So it's a different surface. So what we're going to do is just select these polygons in here, making sure we have all 48 selected. Hit Q on the keyboard, barrel tip inside. and we're also going to need to define this area a little better let me add a little more geometry into it and actually what we'll do is we'll take the knife tool and cut it right down the barrel and that defines that a little more and now we're going to use the bandsaw tool to add more geometry in rings so we're going to select a few polygons go to multiply select bandsaw pro from subdivide and as you can see, I already have a surface defined in there, so I pull up the numeric. And I'm going to set this back to default, which I have changed actually. So I'll go to Custom 2. And this is what should come up, unless you've used the tool before. And you just get one split down the center. And we're going to click Enable Divide, which is going to divide those polygons. And if you noticed before too, I only had to select a few polygons, and it'll automatically select the ring and what we want to do is add and we're going to add one on this side and add one on this side and then you can hit spacebar to end the tool Oh, and actually it didn't add those extra ones so we're going to undo it go to bandsaw pro again and this time it added them and that was because I didn't enter on the value hit spacebar and now you can deselect and also once you do bandsaw, the points, all the new cre newly created points are selected in points mode. But we can deselect those right now. And that looks pretty good. So we're going to pull up surface editor now. So control F3 or F5. And barrel tip inside, we're just going to change to sort of an orangish color. And then hit smoothing, make sure smoothing is on. and take a look at the object so far and that looks good so we're gonna cut and paste and cut and paste so all of these are on the same layer because we really don't need to edit these anymore so them being on the same letter layer will not affect them 
hit S on the keyboard to save it and now we are going to move on to the mount for the scope okay we're gonna work on sort of the connecting rod for the scope mount which is this entire section right here which is still kinda part of the main body but without it it's kinda hard to model the mount for the scope so we're gonna start laying out our points now for this piece in front right here so we're gonna do uh, shift and plus key and just create our points right mouse clicking and laying them out and now there's one thing that's a little hard to tell uh, by only using a side reference photo and that is the width the other direction of pieces like this and now it's a lot easier when you have a round object like we had before uh, doing the scope and the main body it's really easy to tell because we're lathing it and we know that that surface is round but when it comes to pieces like this you can't really tell exactly how wide it is so you kinda have to guess um, if you also take a look at the perspective view you can kinda get an idea of the width of the object and you just kinda gotta eyeball it and kinda factor in what you know about the object and we can tell this is overhanging just a little and so you just kinda kinda look at that as you're modeling so we're gonna bring this up full view right now hitting the zero key on the number pad and just kinda now using the drag tool just control T to fix these into position where we want them Okay, and what we also need to do, actually, these are out of place, but we need to delete this, and we're going to copy and paste that down, oh, and make sure we constrain it, because we know that is a straight line, so we want to keep it as close as possible, and there's a lot of things about the model that you won't be able to get as close as the image reference, just because you can't really tell exactly like I was saying before how wide certain things are or even with this image since it is a smaller image reference even exactly how some of the pieces look and since it is also a dark model it's kinda hard to tell alright and those look like they're in line so I'm just gonna go ahead and select all these in order now and if you get out of order at all like if you miss a point you can just deselect the ones that you and go back and just start from that last point and you can use the middle mouse button to continue selecting points or you can hold down shift and it'll continue selecting All right, hit P on the keyboard to create that polygon and actually I'm gonna drag that in just a little and we need to change the surface on this because this is not the correct surface and we're going to change it to actually main body nernies and nernies are kind of just the miscellaneous stuff here and there as I was saying before kind of like the knobs on top of here but these are all going to have this pretty much the same surface name so it doesn't really matter too much anyway and from here we're going to use the extrude tool which is shift E and just use the middle mouse button or control and click to constrain that to make sure we pull it out so it's equal and what you can also do is hit F2 on the keyboard to, and then what that does actually I'll undo that and zoom out it centers the entire object to the grid and then you can just constrain it and pull it up and that way we know that this way is correct but we also need to pull it back to where it was 
about right there. And what we know about it from looking at the perspective view is that it does go out farther than the main body. So what we can do is hit H on the keyboard and just stretch from the center or make sure that you have if you have selection under mode selected then you can go pretty much anywhere and it'll go from the center and just constrain that and pull it out a little and now you can tell it is going over and you can take a look at the perspective view and see that it goes over not a whole lot oops but enough to be able to tell how wide it needs to go and that looks pretty good and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to knife it down the center and this way we can either use symmetry if we turn symmetry on and now we can just model one side and it'll show up on both or you can turn symmetry off and model on one side and then when you're done delete this section and mirror it down the center and that way you make sure that it is symmetrical on both sides because this piece of the gun is going to be symmetrical and actually there's a little bit of editing that needs to be done here this needs to come up a little bit more just a little alright and I am going to use symmetry for this so turn on symmetry and symmetry only works in this viewport so it's another reason why we put the image reference on this side in the bottom right viewport is so that we can use symmetry in this viewport down the center of the what would be the symmetrical line of the object All right, so we're gonna zoom in on this and hit B on the keyboard for bevel and we just want to give a little bit of a bevel on here just to define the roundness of the end and by adding the roundness instead of just leaving it the way it was it picks up lots of extra little highlights and I try, try to round as much as I can on the object but some things uh, we're gonna have to cut the center out right here with a boolean subtraction and that we're not going to be able to really round too much we'll be able to add a highlight to it which I can show you which I will be showing you later but you won't be able to round it so it smooths inward for the cutout and that's just because the way the polygons are laid out it will give a very interesting looking effect with smoothing on alright so I'm gonna turn symmetry off now because we don't really need it and that's all rounded right there so we don't really need to worry about this bottom polygon because we have our rounding right there and I think I'm actually going to pull it in just a little bit more. So turn symmetry back back on by clicking symmetry, or you can use Shift Y and select these points and pull them in and just nudge them just a bit because they don't need to be that far out. And zoom in a little and turn symmetry back off. Okay, and that looks pretty good. And we can just have that going into it, and that's fine. We don't really need to about worry about rounding that portion of it. Because most of the renders you'll do of a lot of these objects, they'll be somewhat far away. And the really, really close-up detail uh, doesn't matter too much. Uh, try to add as much detail as you can, of course, but some things are best left the way they are. Alright, and now if you take a look at that perspective view, you can see it kind of cuts out into the inside of the object. So we need to model that cutting tool. And actually this cut goes all the way through. And we have this next section right here going through all the way up to it. But actually in our other model, what we've done to kind of reduce the complicatedness of that and not have to really go through all the way and to cut down on some of the geometry we've just taken and brought it up to this edge and only cut halfway through and then we've also added a little segment in here 
and this one isn't as wide as the one we're modeling right now and like I said you really much pretty much just have to judge the wideness and this one probably isn't the exact wideness that it should be but it does work and I've also actually in this one we have it rounded and you can tell a little bit when it's actually on the model but it shouldn't matter too much with what we have right here so now we're going to model that cutting tool so we're going to open a new layer and put this in the backdrop and now the cutting tool actually take a look at that light again and it's straight and rounded on the bottom so what we're going to do is take a disk so go to create select disk and we're gonna create a disk it doesn't have to be perfectly round and up a little higher and we're just gonna use the points from the bottom section of this to create our extruded tool for cutting and we'll open up the numeric and we'll turn this to 48 because we want this cut to be well defined and hit spacebar K on the keyboard to kill the polygon and now we can delete these top points and also copy or select these top two that we have left behind copy and paste constrain T on the keyboard to move and move them upward and now select them in order P on the keyboard to create our polygon and now we're going to extrude and just pull that out and if you notice right here it's inside out so you just hit F on the keyboard to flip those polygons and with extrude it's sometimes hard to tell which way you have to pull it out but usually you can just hit the F key on the keyboard and that'll just flip it and then it'll work itself out Okay. And in this case, we're actually going to do the same thing we did last time, or in the other model, and that is just cut halfway, and then we're going to add that little section, and the other piece is just going to butt up to it. And now, it, let's say you wanted to round this section, there's a, actually an easy way to do it, and we might as well just do it to cover that aspect in case you did want it rounded and we're just going to put the barrel in the background layer and we need to figure out which lines on here or which circle is the actual definition of the object so we're just going to use the move tool and move up the bottom to where it is and it's about the center of this round line so we can work around that so I'm going to undo and now I'm going to use the knife tool and I'm just going to add some knives down the center try to get them as equally spaced as I can and if you don't want to hit spacebar and recall the tool every time you can just right mouse click and then move it into place and right mouse click again and move it into place and you could also do this with the bandsaw tool but I like doing it with the knife tool because it's a, it's a little more precise alright and now what we're gonna do is delete these other set of polygons on the other side because we want them to be equal and shift V on the keyboard for mirror and just mirror down the center and it'll automatically merge your points together uh, if you're using an older version of Lightwave I believe before 6.0 it might be 7.0 you might have to manually merge the points down the center but with the version I'm using which is 8.3 you don't have to okay and now what we're gonna do is actually just use uh, the magnet tool and in order to get that tool it's shift and colon and then what you do is you right mouse click and you drag out this kind of circle area of all the points that you want to be affected by this and actually we just need 
these inside points right here to all be affected. And what you can do is just pull it up and it will give us that curve. But if you notice here, it's not quite a perfect arc. And the reason for that, if you pull up the numeric, you have a slider right here that will give you the information. So if we move those out, or move the slider over, and you see how it arcs a lot more. And now we look at it and try it. Now we have a perfect arc going across here. And it it should be just a little bit intersected. Yep, it is. And it adds just a little more highlight in there. And I guess that does look a lot better than if it was just jetting through it. Okay, and now we're going to move back to the cutting tool. And I just wanted to do that before we cut it. And also by adding that roundness too, now we're kind of able to tell where the bottom of that is. So we can move it up a bit and go back to maybe with the perspective view and take a look and see that it is a little bit above that. And that looks about right. Maybe move down just a nudge. And we're going to move it inward just a little. Okay. And now our cutting tool is in place. So what we're going to do is put this in the foreground layer and put this one in the background layer. And since we already kind of had that set up, you could also just hit the print or what is it, the quote, quotation key, and that will switch between the foreground and background layers. And we need the cutting tool in the background because we're going to do a boolean subtract. So Shift B for sub and that brings up your boolean tool, and make sure subtract is selected and click OK, and that will create our cut in there. And I want to f define a surface name on here really quick because we don't really have one. Uh, main body nerdy. Actually, no, we do have the main body nerdy on there. I'm going to pull up the surface editor really quick and make sure that I s actually give the actual surface to that. So I just copy and paste from main body to main body nerdy. And now you can see we get a little bit of weird smoothing artifacts because of the cut, and that will happen. And also, there's a little bit of some errors in here, but there are ways to fix that if you don't mind having a non-continuous object. Uh, we could c grab these two polygons on the ends here, cut and paste, and that would make that perfectly flat, but then you get this kind of rim around here, and that's just because the polygons aren't merged. So we're going to undo that. Actually, that's okay for right now. And we can actually, if we bevel that in one, one more, it should take care of a lot of that. So we're going to turn symmetry back on and bevel it. And just make sure we pull it downward. And actually, if you notice here, our points, and this is one thing that can happen with bevel, is our points are cl so close right here, they're overlapping when we bring it down too far. So we'll undo that, and now we can use smooth shift. So shift F, right mouse click, and then hit H on the keyboard and just use the stretch tool which is H and that way it's not affecting the layout of the points it's just pulling in the whole object and for this object that's okay you can see just by pulling that in that smooth that out a lot on the main surface and you can do that over other parts of the, the model too that aren't too complex that aren't really rounded and that look like they need a little bit of fixing. Okay, now we also want to add a highlight around this rim in here. Just because it looks real plain, a um, little bit of geometry errors in there, some holes, which will happen with booleans. And we also want we just want to pick up a highlight when we're rendering it so it'll look a lot more real. So we're gonna take these points in here or these polygons and actually we don't need to select that because we're going to add something over it and we can just grab these polygons in here and turn off symmetry and smooth shift them so shift F right mouse click 
and then making sure that mode selection is on we're going to use the stretch tool H and just pull them in a little and if you notice right there that created a lot of errors so we're going to undo it redo it again to select the polygons and we're going to need to edit it just a little actually we'll stretch it inward undo change the mode to mouse and now we can stretch it to wherever we click the mouse and we're going to pull it in a little and take a look and we still have those errors so what we're going to need to do is select all these polygons again which you could also do by undoing and redoing which will keep those polygons selected but we're going to cut and paste like we did before and this isn't a major part of the item so we can we don't really have to worry about this fine edge we have right here there's not a lot of rounding but this will still give us a highlight if you're far away and sort of the appearance of the roundness okay and that looks pretty good okay now we can delete our cutting tool and we're gonna put this new section we just modeled in the background layer and now we're gonna create a real simple object to kinda go in here like we had before covering up the area if you look at this section right here you can see just that small box with a little tiny bevel on top in there so we'll go back to our object and just go to the use the box tool which you can do shift X or you can go to create and select box and we're gonna drag it out making sure it's centered and we need to make sure that we go and drag this in to go inward just a little bit of where it's cut out okay and we'll move that out just a little and actually stretch tool to H and pull it out just a little bit more a little more definition there alright and now we're gonna use the knife tool and we're gonna add a little bit of a slant on this and what we want to use is the knife tool sort of for the smoothing so that it's a little more defined so shift K knife it right there and then control T and pull that down and as you can see there's sort of that line right there and that takes care of the smoothing errors that you will get because of this sort of object and now we also need to add a little bit of rounding on there so we're going to use the bevel tool select that polygon zoom in nice and close so we don't have to worry about numeric and have a little more, more control over it hit B on the keyboard and just pull that in and now we got our rounding which covers almost every side except these the sides right here so we're gonna grab this back part and we're gonna bevel that and the bottom part of that isn't seen so we don't have to worry about only beveling this top polygon right here just because it's hidden but now we have a nice highlight all the way around and we'll take a look at that and maybe we'll add a smooth shift in front here shift F right mouse click T for the move tool we're gonna move it out just a little and then we're gonna use H for the stretch tool and select it down here and just pull that in enough to add an edge okay now we have that little piece built All right, and now we can start working on the rest of it and we're gonna keep this on another layer right now but we will cut and paste this little box we made onto this layer okay and I wanted to point out really quick too this extra little piece sticking out there and that's just because the object is slightly rotated sort of towards us when the picture was taken so that little tiny bit is showing up from behind 
and that's just sort of a small perspective error but we can work around it and that perspective error also takes place over here where you can see the roundness of so the, the what would be an ellipse right here if you could actually see the front of it and that's some of the problems with using just straight reference photos but you can usually work around it and it's usually not too big of a deal that you can't tell what's going on in the model alright the next thing we're gonna add now we're gonna take and start a new layer and put these other two in the background layer the first the second and third layers in the background of the fourth layer and we're gonna make this sort of box that goes around here and actually this part is just a box because it's separated from this small accent right here and you might be able to see a little better in the perspective or if we pull up our other object you can see it's just a box and then we have this extra piece coming out right here so I'm going to go back to our object and put these back in the background layer and if you need to put multiple layers in the background layer you just hold on the shift key and select the bottom okay and now we're gonna use a box so shift X or create and box tool and just draw our box and it doesn't need to be perfect right now we can just get the basic box because we can go and edit it from there but we need this box to line up sort of with the inside cut here so we use H for stretch and stretch from that middle line inward and the height looks like it's pretty good but we want to make go down just a little bit more just that it's, we make sure it's going into the object and then we need to pull it out all the way so we're going to grab that back polygon and move it over and this is going to go in between these small sections built right here which are just sort of half cylinders okay and actually we need to move this polygon down so select it and move it down a little just because we will be beveling it so we're going to need a little bit of extra space for that bevel okay and now we're going to bevel all the edges on this. We're not, and if nothing is selected, everything is selected. So I'm going to hit B on the keyboard for a bevel, and just bevel that inward a little. And now, if you take a look in the perspective view, I'll hit zero on the keyboard. Well, the cursor is in the perspective view, and you can see we have a nice accent on the top of here and actually I am gonna undo that bevel just because it's a little too small and we want some more rounding in there so I'm gonna hit B again after undoing that and just pull it out a little more and now if you take a look it looks a lot more rounded and essentially it looks better And also what I want to do is grab these bottom polygons and try to match it up with where that other object is just so it's going in a little and we see a little bit of definition in there. No, not quite. Pull it up, nudge it just a little bit more. There we go and now we can see how it's kind of rounded into there and it's not perfectly straight and it just picks up more highlights and makes it look a lot more real All right. now the next thing we're gonna add is these sections in back these sort of half cylinders so we're gonna open a new layer put these in the background and also the other one in the background layer and select create disk 
and just create a disk to match the curvature of the top part. And actually the screw that's in here isn't exactly in the center, so we can't use that as a reference. So we just gotta eyeball the edges. And numeric, make sure 48 is selected, because that gives us a nice definition. And we're gonna hit spacebar. And then we're gonna hit K on the keyboard to kill those point or kill the polygon. And we're gonna delete the other half of the points except the center. And actually select these two. Copy and paste and move those down. Alright, and now select them in order. And selecting a little out of order here. Just deselect and keep going from where you screwed up at. And hit P on the keyboard to create that polygon. And frame all views. Uh, Shift A. And now we're going to extrude it. So Shift E on the keyboard to extrude. And we just want to extrude it a little because it's not a huge object. And now we also want to add a bevel on both sides to define that curve. So hit B on the keyboard. And then make a segment, right mouse click, make another segment. And now we have a nice rounded section right here. A nice little piece. And T on the keyboard to move. And we're going to move it right on the side of that piece. And as you can see, it's not going in as far as we need it to. So we're going to bring it in just a little bit more, pulling it in this way on the x-axis. And then we're going to select these polygons on the bottom and move it down just a little bit. And we'll take a look and see how that looks. And it's butting up with it. Just about perfect. Okay, and now what we need to do is we could just mirror it right now before we to get it on both sides. But actually, if you see, there is that little tiny sort of screw in there. And instead of having to mirror the cutting tool to put that on both sides, we're going to cut that first before we go and mirror it. So open a new layer, stick that one in the background, and select the uh, disk tool again. Or actually, in this case, we might use the ball tool. I'm going to take a look at our other model and see what we've got here. Ah, okay. It's a little bit different. And sometimes you have to look at the perspective view to sort of, sort of see those. So we're going to open up the image editor again and take a look at that. And if you see right here, actually it's not just a hole in there, it does come out just a little. So in that case, what we're going to do is put everything in the background layer, of the new layer with nothing in it, and we're going to create a disk. And I actually want to create this in the center, because I think it looks better in the center. The actual image reference, it's off a little, but that might just also be be because of the type of piece that is, and it's just the lighting of it. Alright, hit spacebar. We're just going to use a single sided polygon. We're not going to worry about making an object because we're going to be using the shift or the, the bevel tool and not the smooth shift and creating that sort of eyelet looking thing. So hit B on the keyboard for bevel, and we're going to pull it out. And right mouse click to define that. And we're going to pull it out just a little bit more. And then right mouse click, and define it a little bit more. Right mouse click, and then not create any inset 
And sometimes this is easier to do with smooth shift, but we're just going to use bevel right now. Because with smooth shift, you can using the stretch tool, you can be a little more precise. And okay, and now we'll right mouse click again, and we'll start to define the inside. So pull it in a little more, zoom in on that so you can see what's going on, and right mouse click again, and sort of right there. Actually, a little bit bigger. Because I'm looking at this curve right here. That and then you can also look at the perspective to see what's going on. Right mouse click again. And then we can end it inside of the other object. Alright, and I'm going to take a look and see what we have here. Yeah, it's pr pretty much just straight. Maybe a little bit smaller, a little more cone like. But it's basically the same object. So we'll place that on there. And actually that is a little big. So all we gotta do is just use this the size tool, or actually in this case just the stretch tool. Making sure mode is on selection and using the middle mouse button or control and clicking and constraining that down. And I also want to pull it out maybe just a little. And now we've got that sort of piece on there. And maybe we'll move it up so that it's centered with the actual center of the round part. Alright, that looks good. So now we'll cut and paste that onto the other layer. And now we can shift V for mirror and just draw that on that center line. And now we have two of them and they both go on the outside of that box. Okay, and it's starting to come along. And now we're going to add this little section, little pieces right here, just before we work on this other defining part. To open a new layer again and put everything we just made in the background layer plus what we made before. So everything in the background layer. And we're just going to create another box. And actually, this is going to be going on the right side. Because everything we're modeling right now is on this side of the model. And you can use that knob, the big knob, as a reference right now to tell which side you're on. And we need to make that from the box. Use the perspective view to tell exactly where that is. Okay, we'll just pull it in all the way, just to be sure. Maybe a nudge more. And for this, you can't really tell how far out it is, but we do know that it won't be out that far. So we're also going to look at the perspective again, and you kind of tell that it is a large box that comes out, and that we are also going to be defining this line right here by however far out this comes. And actually, that does look about right as far as how far it's shot out, and that doesn't look like it's too far. That's why it's always good to confirm with the perspective view if you have one. Okay, so what we're going to do now is bevel all of the polygons here. And actually undo that. Yeah, that looks good. And we can delete these back polygons because we won't need them and they're just taking up 
precious computing processing speed. And sometimes it's just deleting those little ones here and there all throughout the model that keep your computer running fast. Because like I said, this is about a 40,000 polygon object. And if you're not careful, it could easily be 50,000. Alright, and now we need to make... There's sort of treads in here. If you take a look, once again, at the perspective view, you can see there's kind of treading in there. It's not very defined, but you can see it. So I want to make sure we add that. And we're going to use the knife tool for that. And just knife it on these lines. And we want to make sure that it is equal and that looks good now what we're also going to do is add segments so we're going to knife it again and just add all of these little segments in here the knife tool is shift K again and then you can just right mouse click like I'm doing right now just to create those extra cuts and that spacing is off just a little so we'll move that in and now if you don't want to have to go over and re-knife that whole thing you can cut it right down the center delete this whole side use the mirror tool and now it's equal on both sides and we know it's equal because we mirrored it and if you also keep in mind if you uh, depending on if you're using grid snap or not or what sort of grid snap you're using when I made that knife I also deleted the polygons and mirrored it without zooming in or out after I did that knife and what that will do is make sure that that point of the grid that you're sort of snapping to is the exact same because it can get a little off and sometimes it's hard to align points on certain axes and that's why it's good to use set value before you lathe um, because sometimes it won't be exact so if you knife something and delete and then mirror over make sure that you don't go in, zoom in and out because it could throw off the grid snap a little uh, unless of course you're using set value then you really don't have to worry about it but in this case it's in sort of a weird area and it'd just be a lot of work to have to use set value okay so now we want to add this tread so we're just going to be selecting these new polygons we created just the new polygons and we're going to use bevel to add that tread, sort of like we did before uh, on the grips on the top of the knobs, on the top knobs up here for the scope. Pretty much the same idea. It's a nice little trick to add that sort of definition that you need. I'm going to zoom in real close just so we don't have to use the numeric. And B on the keyboard for bevel and we're going to come out a little and then right mouse click come in right mouse click again and then pull it inward and right mouse click one more time and then make it a little bit smaller and now we've got nice treads on there and it's, as you can see the smoothing is a little off and all we have to do is f to fix that is just add knives again so we'll knife it right next to each side and that way there will be a little bit of distortion between the bevel and the actual knife we just made but if it's close enough to the tread it'll look like it's part of that and that looks good and actually we'll add ones on the sides over here too see that fix that as well and we could also move along 
the top and if I undo that you can really see the difference and now it is straight and looks exactly how it should it's just working out some of these little smoothing issues that you have to kinda learn to do and usually knifing as we have just done can fix most of those problems and now we're going to compare with our other model just to take a look and it's about the same there's little differences here and there uh, the outsides are it's a little more rounded and you could change that if you wanted to but we're going to leave ours the way it is okay and we also need to add these eyelets that we have so for that we're just going to use the same one we made for this side piece over here and copy it's either control C or just C on the keyboard and paste it into a new layer and now we're going to move them over and make it so it comes out and size it down using the stretch tool or the size tool so they undo H for stretch make sure that you're in uh, selection mode so that way you don't have to be exactly in the center and T to move and just move it in place and if you notice with this the treads are going to be going through it and we don't want that so we're going to take this middle polygon or the center polygon rather and move it out so it's on the outside of that and add an extra bevel to it just so it's rounded on the bottom and mirror it down that center line and it looks like it's down a little actually it's not quite centered so I'm going to undo that mirror set that back in the background and move it into place so it's about center and mirror it again and there that looks like it's in center so we can cut those now and paste them onto here and we can also cut that and paste it with this layer and cut and paste that onto that box because we will not be editing these objects anymore therefore it doesn't hurt to have them on the same layer Okay, and before I move on really quick, I'm going to hit S on the keyboard to save it. So you want to make sure you're constantly saving your object. And now we're going to model this section right here. So we're going to open a new layer, put this one in the background, the previous one, just the previous one. And let's take a look here. Okay, we'll just model a box. just a single sided poly actually because we can just mirror over or actually just stretch out this whole section and this way we don't have to work with the whole thing right now because this is the exact same all the way down to here which butts up with that other section and it's just this kind of triangular looking thing here that's the main part so we're going to knife it now using uh, shift K pull up the knife tool and knife it on these lines and we're also going to knife it right here and now we're going to use smooth shift on these polygons actually looks like that's off just a little so we're gonna grab these two polygons and move it up just so that it's centered and now grab these ones again just these four and smooth shift and right mouse click so shift F and then right mouse click T for move and we're gonna move it out 
and it goes all the way out to about the end of that box. Okay, and now if you take a look, it does slant inward, so we're going to grab these points and back and actually just those two right there and move that into place and it looks a little weird because we have this extra points in here so we'll grab those and now we have to move them about to match up but we still want to be defining that triangular look so we'll do H on the keyboard and come to this other view and kind of pull that down and it looks a little weird right now that's all right that's because we need to grab these other points right here and use the stretch tool to stretch those in the center or about in the center and then T and move those down and we have a lot of errors in here because of that type of modeling but we can fix those by adding a few knives so if we knife that right there and we're also going to knife right here and we just have to get rid of these errors that we have and that's just because the order of the points because these are four point polygons and because they're non-planar we're getting some display errors and what we're going to do to fix that is add a smooth shift to the end of all of these so shift F, right mouse click, and move that out. And then use the stretch tool and bring those in. And we also need to edit this point using the drag tool. Actually, there is no point there. That was just the uh, just the guide sticking out so we're going to edit this point right here and pull that out just to make it planar and as you can see that fixes that st sticking out or facing the wrong way and we're going to move that inward a little and we're going to try knifing it one more time to fix that smoothing error and that looks pretty good okay now we need to worry about this polygon right here and as you can see it says it's facing the other way but that's actually an error and it kinda got skewed around a little and it's really not facing the wrong way because if I was to actually edit the points it will flip itself back but if I flipped it right now it's actually going to screw up the model. So we're going to leave it where it is right now. And see if I move that, it actually goes back into place. And it's just the way the points are set up right now. So we need to change that. And that didn't work. So we actually need to go in there and edit the point and find out why it's facing the wrong direction. So we have all our points selected right now. And we can take a look. And we can see that it is that point right there, which is facing an odd direction. We'll undo it. Actually, we're going to work on the other side right now, and we'll just knife it down the center and mirror that over, and that will take care of that error we have on the other side. 
And what I'm going to do is select these three polygons right here, and we're going to smooth shift those inward and add a little bit of curvature to that. So Shift F, right mouse click, and then H on the keyboard to stretch it. And we're going to stretch from up here. And we're going to select the mouse as the mode. And just pull it in a little bit. Maybe zoom in just a little here so we can take a look. And we pulled it in that direction. So now we need to pull it in this way. And now we've got that nice blend right there and around on this edge over here but we don't have a lot of smoothing in here so in order to fix that we're just going to do quick bevels on these two and we're going to zoom in nice and far nice and close so that we can do a tight bevel because we don't want to jet out too far with it Now that adds a little accent in there between each of the polygons. But now we need to fix this error over here. And also instead of smoothing it out on the other side too, we'll just use the knife tool. So we're going to open up that bottom right viewport in full screen and shift K and knife it what looks like would be down the center. And using these polygons down here as reference because of the extra ones over here, it'll throw you off. We're just going to eyeball the center and delete these polygons. And then mirror. And as you noticed, I did not zoom in or out after knifing that just so that we keep with the correct grid snap. And now we have that on both sides, so now it's correct. And also, this need does need to be extruded a little. So we're going to set this to wireframe mode. And we're going to select all the outside points on the back side to get extra geometry so it's not directly sticking out. of that object. And now we need to make sure we select the correct points, so we might have to zoom in kind of far. Oh, and I just deselected them by accident. Actually, I'm going to use probably a different viewport for this, along with that perspective, just so we can make sure we get them on the outside. And basically what we're doing is just selecting the points so we can create a polygon, and then smooth shift outward from there because at this point it's too late to do an extrude and actually we got another error in here so actually I will have to use and that's just because the points are in line and that's why I'm having trouble right now selecting these points in order is just because a lot of them are in line, like if you notice down here. So if I was to select them in one viewport, it won't work correctly on another viewport. So I will just have to use the perspective view. And it'll take a little bit longer. But it'll definitely be worth it. Okay. Move down the line. And outside one okay and now we should have all of those points selected hit P on the keyboard set this back to textured view this new polygon is facing the wrong direction so we hit F on the keyboard and as you can see that is facing downward and that's just because there are so many points facing so many different directions that it's thrown off just a little. We'll just smooth shift it from there, so shift F, right mouse click, and move it in. And now we
we've added our geometry in there and we can delete that polygon but now we have it sticking out a little and we'll select that and move it out so it's not entirely sticking out of the object or not entirely inside of it so we do have that definition in there okay and now we can select these polygons over here and delete them and then select their points and move it inside of the other object or right up against it actually we're going to do it inside and because it is a little bit bigger we're going to scale it down so H on the keyboard and we're going to stretch it inward and we'll stretch it inward this way as well and maybe just a little bit more and now we'll take a look and see how that is and we'll show it with the rest of the object and that's all in line and looks pretty good so now we can mirror over actually what we didn't bef do before was mirror this onto the other side so what we're going to have to do is actually select all these polygons in here and we're going to use the select connected tool which is the right bracket key and that will select everything connected to the polygons we just selected and shift V to mirror and mirror that over and then we'll mirror that new section and then we'll cut and we'll paste and then we can also cut this and paste this onto that other little part we made and now we don't really need to, f to worry about defining separate surface names for each one of these objects down here it's all part of the black nerny surface that we have and that's all exactly the same surface throughout the model so we don't really need to worry about defining specific surface names for it now if we take a look at on the barrel and now we have that frame set up and the next thing we're gonna work on okay and now we have this frame set up uh, the next thing we'll be working on is the actual brackets to connect it to the scope okay and we'll start out by modeling a box so create box or shift X and we're just gonna draw it out to about here we don't need to go all the way down because we can always just grab these points or the polygon that's created on the end and just drag it all the way over because it's just this small section, the triangular type section on that side and then that little bit that comes out just butts up with that other part we just modeled. Okay. And we drag it out on the other end just a little over here and shift A to kind of zoom in at all viewports to frame it in and we're going to move it in so it's a little bit into that box well, maybe not so much right there okay and now we're going to knife it so shift K and we're going to knife it right here and another knife just below it and now that's not centered so we're going to grab these points and move them up now we also need to do one more knife right here and that's mainly because we're going to be using these polygons right here just to create this section that comes out and we're going to grab these two polygons and make sure we don't grab the back ones and actually before it so those don't get in the way we could just take those back ones and right now we're gonna merge them so shift Z and that'll merge them into one polygon and reduce the amount we're using and we're gonna grab these two now and we're gonna smooth shift them so shift F right mouse click and then T for move and we're just gonna move it out 
as far as it needs to go and that line right here actually comes out um, about to the end of this box so right there okay and now the next thing we need to do is actually add one more knife down the exact center or as close to the center as we can and that's just so we have to edit only one side and then we can cut this and mirror it over and then merge polygons when we're done All right, I'm gonna bring up the perspective view full view now in zero key with the cursor over the perspective view and I'm gonna change this from texture to wireframe shade and that will allow us to see the polygons but still or the points but still see the object so we're gonna take these polygons right here and we're just gonna kill them it's so okay on the keyboard and now go into points mode and we're gonna select these points to create polygons and we're gonna create a triangular polygon three-sided or three-point polygon and hit P on the keyboard and do the same thing on the other side, just selecting the points in order, hit P on the keyboard to create the polygon, and then a four-sided polygon right here, or a four-point polygon. Okay, and hit zero to go back to our other view. And now we can deselect those polygons we made, and select the bottom set of polygons, delete, and also we have a standing point right here we can delete that as well that's from our merge earlier and now we're gonna mirror it so shift V and select right on that line and just hit tab really quick just to make sure those are merged together those points to make sure they're right up against each other and now we're gonna merge all of these polygons together so select all of these all four of these and shift C and that will merge those and we're also going to merge all of these so shift Z and I'll put it in its own viewport right now and hit zero again to bring it up full view and we're also going to merge these bottom this bottom set but this is going to be coming in a little, this edge, we'll be pulling it in these two points. So we're going to leave this line right here to define that bottom section. And then the back, we can merge those two because we knifed it down the center. And we can also merge these and these two on the other side. Okay, hit zero key again. And now you can kind of see the object so far, how it's supposed to look. And we're going to delete those freestanding points that are in there. Oh. Uh, it looks like it's this one. And those are actually part of the model, I think. Nope, oh, you can delete those. And we didn't merge it on the end over here. So actually. We'll merge these all of them. Shift Z. And now we just have one polygon. And now we're gonna grab these two points and hit T on the keyboard for move and just move them in. And that way we get our angle on there. And now all we have to do is bevel it, just so that we get a nice edge around all the pieces so they pick up highlights. And one thing I want to mention is the reason we are adding all these highlights, switch back to this texture view, is sometimes, depending upon the lighting, when objects are rotated uh, certain directions, like as you can see right here, you can't see that edge and that's because well and this is going to be the same texture all throughout this object so by adding these highlights it will define 
all of the edges so they don't blend in with other polygons as you can see they sort of do right here and you can't really tell what the object look there's no depth pretty much when you're looking at it like this so we're going to add a full bevel so we're just going to zoom in to kind of the corner over here hit B on the keyboard and then bevel it while still looking in our perspective view and figuring out how rounded we want it to be and that looks pretty good and we've also created an extra lip over here which separates that part from this back part and that's kinda what we want hit spacebar to end the tool and now we're going to grab these polygons and hit T on the keyboard and just move them all the way over I'm gonna bring that up full view now because there's something else I gotta show you we can also delete these points that are left over but if you take a look right here and compare it to that box it's actually supposed to be in the inside and not coming out so we just need to size this down a little and we're just going to use the stretch tool for that and we'll use selection mode and we're just going to constrain it and pull it down a little just stretching it inward and then T on the keyboard and we're going to center it to that box and it should still look alright down here hit zero key again and we also need to apply the Nerny surface name to this so I'm going to hit Q on the keyboard and select main body Nernies and put those together and see how they look Okay, that looks pretty good. There are a few maybe smoothing errors over here that we might need to fix. And now we can knife them. The main reason that we merged most of those polygons together before was just for our bevel. So that we wouldn't have multiple bevels coming out from each of the polygons. So now we can knife it. So shift K. And we're going to add a knife right here. And I'm going to add a diagonal knife across here and that'll just bring out those edges a little and I'm gonna try one right there and see how it looks and that adds a little more definition along the rim right here and now if you look at this polygon you can obviously tell that there is a lip coming out there's a lot more depth and that looks pretty good. There's one thing I also noticed that has to do with this back box that we made and that is it's not butting up exactly to that section and also this thing is off and actually the whole model appears to be off right now that whole section got moved just a bit so all we have to do is just move it over so we're gonna grab that and hit T on the keyboard and just move it back into place I'm not sure how that happened but it's an easy fix which is one of the beauties of working on separate layers too is if something like that happens you can just select that layer and move only that layer over and it also got moved on this axis too so we're gonna grab those stick them in the background layer and T for the move tool and just center that up and there we go but I also want to move the, this box up forward a little more so we're going to grab those end polygons and hit T on the keyboard and just move them in so they're touching and take a look alright 
Now we can mirror this new section we just built, so Shift V and mirror it down that Z axis. And we can cut and paste it onto the rest of our base mount. And then we're done, and we can start moving on to the actual scope mount. And then we'll go ahead and get started on that. Okay, we're going to start working on the mounts now for the scope to mount it onto the actual gun. And as we're using the back perspective view right now, uh, showing this image, just so you can see sort of what the scope has to slide onto. And you can't really see that if you look at the front perspective, you can barely see that object at all. But with the back perspective, you can see that pretty clearly. And that's just what the scope is going to be sliding onto, mounting onto, and you can also get a better idea of how the mounts actually look. Since we don't really have a front view of this image, you can kind of see how it's laid out, and that we're pretty much going to have to guess, but we can make it really close. Alright, so we're going to close this out, and now we're going to model that section. Okay, and now we're going to have to figure out where our box is. So we're going to select those, the top polygon on there, and take a look, and it's directly in between these two sort of half cylinders that we made before. So now we have a starting point. And now we're going to use the disk tool and just create a single sided disk and we're just going to be using the points from this to get some part of the object just the side part alright we're going to kill our polygon and now we're going to delete these points in here so select all the way up to here and push delete and now we can move that down a little too and now we're also going to have a curve around and then slope down right here. And we're going to add that slope first. So select the disk tool again and pull it out. And also, if you go to numeric, I have it set to sides 24. And that's so, because this is a smaller part of the object, so we don't need as many, to po as many points to define what it's going to look like. And also right here you can see the top of the object, so we can use that as a reference. Alright, that looks good right there, so we're going to kill that polygon. And now delete these points. And now you can see they, the top set of points come up to about the top of it. And that's what we need because we're going to be adding extra points now to define this other section. And actually we'll need to stretch these a little. So H on the keyboard for stretch and then just pull them out, T to move them. And I'll put it in about right there. And now we're just going to manually put in the rest of the points. So shift and the plus key. And now start right mouse clicking and laying out the points for this section. And we need sort of a tighter curve on here. So using the drag tool, which is control T, just to move these in place. And we'll give our rounding back. And then we also want this to be sort of tight, so we're just gonna use two polygon or two points to define that. And now we're going to compare that with that back perspective, and you can see that's how it looks. And if you really want to zoom into it and take a look, you can just open up that image and then flip back and forth between it when you're modeling. Or if you have a second monitor, then you can just put that up on the second monitor. 
Okay. All right. Now we're going to delete these points on the side over here because we're not going to need them. And we'll mirror over. So we'll select all these points except the middle one. And Shift V for mirror. And then we can mirror that over. And now it looks like we brought out these ends a little bit too much. So I'm actually going to undo it just because it shouldn't be coming out as far as those side cylinders, at least not that far. So actually select all the points and we're going to stretch it, actually undo and make sure the mode is set to mouse and we'll stretch from that center and just pull it in just a little and we'll also take these bottom points right here and stretch those out and then we move it down just a little and now you can see it matches up that point that piece right there and now we can go ahead and mirror these points over and now we're just gonna select them in order and create a polygon out of them Making sure we go counterclock or uh, clockwise, and then hit P on the keyboard to create the polygon. And now we're going to use the extrude tool, so Shift E, and just pull that out to where the end is over here. And then grab that polygon on the other side, T to move, and move it out to the other end. And now if you notice, it is inside out, so we'll hit F on the keyboard to flip those polygons. And now you can see, we'll put it on top of the other model, you can see that mount for the actual mount. <laughs> and we're going to bevel this bottom polygon just so we get a nice edge on it. So now you can see that in front where we've beveled it just a little it adds an extra accent and it might be going down a little bit too much into it to really see it so maybe we'll move it up it looks like that line is actually right there so it should be about perfect we might need to pull it in just a little bit more so we're going to select that bottom polygon and now we're going to use the stretch tool and H on the keyboard and we're going to move it in a little on that side and a little in here. And now take a look and see how that looks on top of there. There, that looks a lot better. Now we also want to add a little bit of a bevel on both of these sides. And we might actually need to cut and repaste these back in once that's done just to correct the smoothing. So we're going to select both the, both the end polygons and now we're going to go in and hit B on the keyboard and bevel that just so we get a nice edge and right mouse click and do it again just so it's nice and round on the edges and then right mouse click and this time give it no inset but as you can see we do get some overlapping polygons in here because of that because we went in a little too far so we're gonna hit zero on the keyboard for the front view or the actually it's set to back view right now and hit control T turn on symmetry and that way we can affect both sides at once and we're just gonna move these points actually we need to zoom in a little farther and move them back into place so they're still rounded just so we don't get any overlaps and so we can correct the way that polygon looks and as you can see with symmetry on it changed the other side as well so hit spacebar turn off symmetry zero key on the keyboard just bring it back to our orthographic projection and we can click on a gray area over here to deselect and now we have a nice looking round edge on here and we don't have to worry about cutting and repasting back in because the smoothing seems to be fine on it.
and one thing that always helps that is when you do make that extra bevel in there where the polygons are not moved at all. So if you look right here, these last two sets are exactly the same in the same place on that axis. And that helps with the smoothing. Because if we were to move this out, I'll just show you right now. You see how it affects the smoothing and adds all these extra lines in here. So I'll undo that. And we can put that on top of the object now. And now I actually get started on the real mounts. And if we take a look at that perspective view again, you can see that this mount only comes down about halfway on the other side, and it doesn't come down on the other side at all. And that's because there's a screw on the other side, or a, yeah, it would be a screw, and a small, actually there's like a small box in front of it, which you can't really see on this side, but it is there. And I can show it to you in our finished model just how it looks. You can see it comes down about halfway. And then we have a small box right here as part of the tightener on the screw. So go back to our object. And first we're actually going to model this top section just so we can get an idea of the width that we're going to need. So we're going to open a new layer and put these in the background layer. and actually everything else in the background layer too just because we are going to need to know the dimension of how far to make it because of this extra cylinder in here so use the disk tool and we're going to go from the center of the scope we're as close to the center as we can get it we might have to move it a little and now we're looking at these sets of points right here and we just need to pull them in so that they're correctly over that and we need to make sure that they're on the outer part because we're going to build the rest of the inside right after we define this section so we're going to hit numeric and turn the sides up to 48 because this needs to be defined a, a lot more and hit the spacebar K to get rid of that polygon and keep the points and now we can go ahead right now and delete half of those bottom points and we want to make sure actually I'm going to set this to wireframe right now and now we can see our points in the view in the perspective view and we know that these top ones aren't going to be perfectly rounded and if we pull up that perspective view again you can see that they kinda come out on the sides and maybe the front view might be better for that as you can see it rounds a little on top and then comes out and you get where it kind of clamps together So now we're going to actually use the stretch tool for that. And just hit H on the keyboard. And use our middle mouse button to constrain or control and click to strain. Constrain. And we're also taking a look at this side right here to figure out exactly how it comes down. And actually I'm going to undo that because it's a bit far. And just do it a little bit because we're not going to need all these points in here actually we're going to be deleting a lot of them because it is a straight edge up until the point over here okay so we're going to do some of those manually and we'll just go ahead and delete a few more points because we won't need these and shift and the plus key for point creation And if you notice, it is down a little bit farther than halfway. 
and about the center points right here, and the actual center point is up here. So the clamp does go down a little bit more than center. And we're just gonna right mouse click and create a point now. And now define the center of that clamp with that point. And we'll also move that out on the x-axis. Move with the T key. And we're also going to take a look again at that perspective view, the front perspective view. And by looking at this, we can tell how far the clamps come out comparatively to that screw we made before, or the little tightener we have over here, the adjustment. And we can see that it comes out just about to the exact width as that knob. So we can also use that as a reference. And we have our knob right here, so we can just pull that point in and we know that that is the end. And actually I'm going to go ahead and delete these points on the other side too, so we won't need those. And now we can start making our curve. Actually, I'm going to pull that point in just a little bit more because our curve is going to come out and change the length of it. All right, and shift in the plus key to create our points. And we're just going to create a few points right here. Just, just three, so we have four total. And make that rounded but a little tighter in the inside. And we might need to add a few more points. Maybe we'll add two more. Just so we can define that with zero key on the keyboard to pull that up in full view. You can really see what's going on. Deselect those. Control T to drag them. And now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to create that spline really quick by selecting these in order and hitting Control P and by doing the spine we can see exactly what's off and you can see that kind of curves in a little so we have to drag that out and it's just a nice to have a little reference right here for this and actually we don't need this point in here so we can delete it and now we got that straight line going from a little bit of curve to a straight and this point needs to come in just a little and now we can hit K on the keyboard and kill that. And now we know from here that at this point we'll copy and paste T and constrain it. So control and click or middle mouse button and pull it over because this is straight right here where the clamp meets up with the other one. And now we can add more points. So create in points or shift and the plus key and just define that little bit of curve we have in there and then we also need to do another disk and lay out some more points for the inside so I'm going to use the disk tool create disk and from the center again or as close to center as we can and we're going to take a look at these points now and get them so they're just about, so you can see this right here, this blue part should be right on top. Maybe it needs to come out just a little bit more. But you can see the points, the top points, uh, where exactly they are, and we just need to match that up so it goes around the object. Okay, and we'll hit K on the keyboard to kill those. And now we can delete all these points in here that we don't need. And we also need to hit zero key on the keyboard and bring this up full view. And these actually need to come in a lot more. can be a little confusing sometimes with all of these rings in here. You gotta know exactly which rings are for what. And that looks like that should be good.
Actually, maybe we'll pull these in just a little bit more so they're not sticking so far out. And you just kind of got to judge compared to the perspective view. It looks like they're about the same, but they might actually be a little more inward. And you can kind of tell while you're modeling how things should really go. Alright, so now we're going to select these points in order. And just deselect those and go back to where we screwed up. And go back and reselect them in order. And now hit P on the keyboard. And we're going to change this back now to texture view up in the perspective. And we're also going to mirror this down the center. And I want to make sure that these points are directly on zero before I go ahead and mirror. So I'm going to hit Control V or just V for the set value. And we need to do zero on the X. And hit OK. And I'll Shift V for mirror. And that looks like we've got the top part all right. But I'm going to merge these polygons together right now. So select two polygons and Shift Z to merge them. And now we can use the extrude tool, Shift E, to move that out. And now you can really see that object in there. And that looks like it's the right length. And this is also the same object for right here. And actually, both of the scope mounts are exactly the same. So once we're done with one, we can just copy and paste and move it over to the other side. And now if we want to define, define a nice edge on here, we could bevel from this point and bring it out from these polygons right here. But if you do it from these polygons in the center, and if we pull those out, not bevel, but sort of pull them out a little bit, we can use the stretch tool and drag, then we don't have to worry about kind of screwing up this flat polygon we have right here, and we won't have to worry about smoothing. So we're going to give that a try and see how it looks. So Shift F, right mouse click, and then H on the keyboard for stretch, and we're going to stretch it out this way and up, and then we also need to pull it in a little on the other side. And if you notice here, all of these are now in the inside, and we'll need to manually go in and change that to fix it, just because that's one of the problems with the stretch tool. And if you notice, it still created that improper smoothing. But we're going to go ahead and try to change these points and make them correct and see if that affects it at all. So hit zero key on the keyboard, pull this up the front or the back view in full view. And now we're going to figure out which points go to what on the sides. We're going to turn on symmetry, so now we're affecting both sides. and grab these points in here and we're just going to move it in and as you can see we grab one from the other section and undo and maybe we'll select the polygons to kind of see which points go to what because it can be a little confusing at this point to figure out where the points are And we can take a look here. And now we can see the points are right here. So we'll set it to point mode. And we can also change this texture to wireframe shade. And now we can really see the points and just go in and select them from here. And a lot of times you'll learn that you have to try different things. Uh, sometimes you know how you want to create an object, but it's not always necessarily going to work. 
and you have to try different things and that's kind of what we're doing here is we know what we have to do but sometimes the preferred methods don't work okay so now we have all those points in the inside selected and now we can use the stretch tool so H and we're gonna go from the center and make sure that actually if selection is on then we don't need to go from the center because it'll automatically go from the center and we can constrain and stretch that in and now the problem is that we have symmetry on and that's why we're getting this sort of weird looking effect because what it's doing is it's stretching from one side of the axis it's stretching from here over from this spot, this half of the box right here and not the whole object so we're going to undo that turn symmetry off and now constrain and pull it in and you can see the effect that has and we just need to pull it in a little bit from the actual object and we're also going to turn this back to mouse mode and stretch it downward and maybe back out a little more and just so we get this curve on the end right here and that might be a bit much so we're going to pull it in a little bit more maybe stretch it out because we don't need a large curve on here, just a small one. And we can change this back to texture and now see how it looks. And we still have a lot of distortion with that. And actually we had some problems here. I'm going to undo what I just did. Because actually I only have one side selected. So we need to go in and select the other side now but now we have our point selected so we can tell which ones are which we'll just go in here and verify that we're selecting the back points by looking at the number right here and as we see it increase we know we are selecting more points and it can be a little tedious sometimes especially when you're doing more advanced modeling that's all part of 3D and just go in here and finish this up and if you look at the back here we actually went ahead and selected one of the other polygons right here or points actually and now we can try to stretch that again. So we use H for stretch and we're gonna pull it in a little on top and pull it out just a little on bottom and that should be affecting both sides now and it is and we're gonna look at it by itself now so just just this layer that we're working on hit zero key on the keyboard take a look at perspective and now you can see we have these smoothing issues right here and along here and that's because the amount of points that are in this polygon and this is you're gonna have smoothing issues no matter what when you're using large polygons like this and we're gonna try to cut them close to the sides and that will fix this right here and it also adds a little bit of geometry for what we're gonna be doing and we're, what we're gonna have to do is select these polygons cut and paste them and now they're flat we kind of lose the smoothing in between here and here but since we did bevel it we still have our definition and a highlight that will be getting picked up from that and that's actually what we had to do for our other model too was sort of cut that and paste that back in as you can see right here and actually what we also did for this to fix the top smoothing that we had a problem with on, on the top part was you can also take the sides these side polygons and if you cut and <coughs> sorry if you cut and paste those then you get a very defined line in here so yeah, undo that and redo and that's because we selected that inside cut as well but if we were to cut along here and paste then we'd get sort of a sharp cut but we're gonna leave it the way it is how we have it nice and smoothed throughout the edges because I like, kind of like the way that looks better than the other way and now we can start working on the bottom part
and I'm gonna go ahead and throw these other pieces and the other layers in the background and now we're pretty much gonna model this new section down for down here the same way we modeled this one except there's gonna be more curves in it and it's a little more intricate actually we're gonna open a new layer for this and put everything else in the background layer and another quick way of doing that is actually if you go to window and pull up the layers panel and we expand this area right here we can select our layers that we want to view in here and now if we want to put them all in the background we can just click this tab next to the B right here or this little inside the square right there and that will put everything else in the background layer and you can also name your layers from here too just by double clicking on it and you can give it a name we're not going to worry about that right now and we're just going to put that in the background layer and those layer names will also show up in layout because each layer is used as a different object in layout so if you want to define separate names for each thing that's the place where you'll do it okay and now we need to create a disk and lay out our rounded points for the inside. So we're going to create and disk and we're going to try to do this from the center as close as we can and just I'm using the middle mouse button to constrain this so it stays as a perfect circle or you can use the control and click key just the left mouse button and we're going to try to match this up the other one. Uh, hit numeric really quick and set it to 48 sides and that way we have enough geometry for the full effect and actually what I'm going to do is just put that in the background layer just that last piece we made just because I wanted to match up with that inside that we already have right here and if that's matched up that means that it'll be correct for the bottom part actually undo that make sure you constrain when you're moving and that looks good now we're gonna kill that polygon and we can delete all the points on top right here and we're going to define this section just by using the points tool so create and points or shift and the plus key and just right mouse clicking and creating our points and this one we can't just mirror over because it will be different on both sides and if we take a look at that perspective view, the back perspective, you'll see that it is different on both sides. But the top part is about the same, at least where the clasps are, where the screws are, mounting them together. So we can create the points for this curve right here, and then after that we can't mirror anything else over because it is different. And we want to make sure these come up pretty close. Actually undo that but not too close just because we will be adding a bevel on that and now we're going to define our other points so bring up the points tool again shift plus key and we're going to use this point to make sure it's straight copy and paste and move that over now it doesn't look like we did that before but that's just because the the bevel that we have here but this main line is straight but the bottom parts not and we can actually just edit that point if we want and just use the drag tool for that but yeah as you can see there's a big difference because of that so actually we'll go and change that really quick and just turn on symmetry and now control T for drag and we're gonna move that down so that it's straight and make sure that doesn't affect the model too much. No, it doesn't. 
and we're going to swap those layers again and that looks a lot better okay and we can actually grab points from this other model if we want and turn off symmetry really quick and grab these points from the other model because we it's the same curve so if we use them over it'll look a lot better and paste those in so just copy and paste control C control V or just C and V and we can delete that point we just made and now we're gonna mirror them in this layer delete these top points and mirror again is a uh, shift V and then T to move oh, undo make sure we select the points and move them up and we're gonna test and see how close that is and it's not quite perfect but it does match up a little bit more with it, what we have in back so I'm gonna keep it right there and now we have our little curve right here where the clasp or where the two ends meet up and I'm gonna delete the points on the other side just using the lasso tool and hitting the delete key on the keyboard and I'm gonna grab these points except this center one and shift V for mirror again right down the center and now after this point we can't mirror anything else and if you look up on the top view right here actually the points are off from each other and the easiest way to fix that is to use the stretch tool which is H on the keyboard and just with the middle mouse button or control and left mouse clicking constraining it and just pulling it all the way down until there's no more movement and that way they'll be straight. You could also use set value for that and just set it to zero on the Z axis and then just move it back into place but sometimes it's a lot quicker just use the stretch tool. Alright now we need to start defining the other curves that we have here and we're gonna use a disk tool for that so create and disk and actually and we're gonna create that as it is right now because we want to throw in that other piece that connector in there so we can kinda see what we have to work around and now we can grab this polygon and just move that in and about right there the curve kinda goes down like this and then comes out and then goes underneath and we're gonna size that down I'm gonna actually stretch that so using the H on the keyboard for the stretch and now we can kill that polygon and sometimes it's good to leave the polygon in there if you're moving the whole amount of points around and editing them after you create the actual disk because then you don't have to go in there and continuously grab points or lasso them and we'll delete those and now we're going to manually put in some points just to kind of lay out what we have to do for the rest of it so shift and the plus key and then right mouse click to lay out your points and right now we're just laying out basic points they don't have to be very precise as of yet we just want to get them down and then edit them in a sec and three for right here and this part goes up and actually these other points we can mirror over mirror that and see how that looks and actually it does come in a little too shallow so we'll have to undo that of course we could rotate those points but we're gonna make sure they're correct on this side first before we go and do that so control T on the keyboard and we're gonna drag these points now into position and down here actually the curve comes out a little bit more there's a little more definition 
and we might need to create some more points. And yeah, we're gonna need a few more. Just create a quick few points in there. Shift and the plus key, and right mouse clicking. And I've already used Control T again for the drag tool. Drag our points. And we want to make this nice and round on this section and then bring it in a little tighter over here. And we're going to select this point, copy and paste, and constrain and move it down and move with the T key. And now we can drag these around, control T again. And actually, it kind of slants down as well. So I'm going to drag these up. And we might need to add a few more points in here. So shift and plus key, right mouse click, and add a few points for that curve. And for this bottom section, what we're actually going to do is we're going to be beveling the side polygons just so we can match this up. Because this is an area that is so close to another section that if we beveled the top part, it'd be a lot harder to see. If we did the outer edges like we did before with the top one, it'd be a lot harder to see exactly how it would fit in. And if we do it just with the points right now and matching up this way and not edit the outside and just edit the center polygon like we have up here then we'll be able to make a, ni a nice closer match and this will also show you another technique of doing it and remember edit these make that a little more round and actually it looks like this isn't really rounding too much so we'll pull that point in, or drag it in rather. And actually, this section is a little bit higher. So you can use a stretch tool, select these points and hit H on the keyboard, and constrain and pull them up, because that section is a lot higher. And it's like I said, it's kind of hard to tell with just having uh, reference photographs that aren't very precise so it is good to have your perspective view and take a look at that every once in a while and I am using a second monitor right now so I actually have that perspective view up on that monitor so I can take a look and see exactly what's changed and if you have the physical object in front of you even better and actually this object you can buy on masterreplicas.com if you're actually looking to hold the object in your hand while you're modeling it, which sometimes is easier to do. And in this case, we just have images. And you could also do a printout just to have a hard copy in front of you. Just something to look at. That's, you know, if you don't have a second monitor. But in 3D, it definitely comes in handy a lot of the time. And actually, we're going to grab these points in here and H on the keyboard and stretch them in because this isn't as wide and which means we need to go in and edit a lot more points but we want to get it as precise as possible and we lost some of our definition in here so we'll grab these points and bring them back out just a bit and grab these points right here and then undo, make sure we're in mouse mode, and we are, and stretch them back a little, and now edit them just a little. Okay, that's looking pretty good so far. 
this is actually just a little more rounded than it should be. We're going to leave it right now, though, because we don't want the tutorial to be ridiculously long. And now we are going to define the curve between this section and this section. And for that, we're going to use the disk tool. So create and disk. And if you have a keyboard shortcut set up for that, that's usually a good thing. Because if you're doing a lot of polygonal modeling, it's a good thing to have a keyboard shortcut on that. We don't have one just because we want to have what you have on your computer and it's a lot easier to explain what's going on okay and now we're going to take this polygon and kill it and now remove these excess points we created in here and also up to there and right there and if we just remove those pop points we don't have to worry about really editing them too much because there's a nice curvature in between here this one might need to move a little but now it should curve in pretty nicely and we want to make sure that this part down here we have the proper amount of points in there so we can have our correct geometry and so I'm going to add a few more points and a few in here and we want to move these points down so that they're meeting up and this one actually has to be down a lot further and we kinda have a little point on the end over here so we're gonna move those in and now I'm gonna copy and paste this over and just compare and see how far off it whoops Let's see how far off it is Alright, so I'm going to move that right there and delete that other polygon, or the other point, sorry. And that should be enough to create our bottom piece. So we're going to actually expand this full view to zero on the number pad and just go in and select the points in order as we have in the past going in a clockwise fashion all the way around the model oh. and if you screw up that's okay if you have a middle mouse button you can hold that down or you can use the shift key to continue selecting alright oops missed two go back P in the keyboard and take a look at how this looks and actually it looks like we could edit this a little and sometimes if you have the polygon actually created it's nice to edit that way too to do some finishing touches because then you can see the curvature and how the objects actually gonna look alright so we get zero key in the key keyboard again on the number pad to make sure we bring it back and if you notice here once again we have our points are off a little and that's because we manually created a lot of points and that's going to do it from a different center than which we had created points before because we we're moving around in our viewports and for this I'm actually going to use the set value tool just to make sure that it is perfectly flat so control V for me it might just be V for you depending on which version of Lightwave you're using or what your defaults are and we're going to do it zero on the Z axis and that moved it all the way over here but now we know it's perfectly straight and we're going to move this into place it's a little bit inward because we want to have a bevel which we're going to be beveling from the sides this time and not from the center and we can use the extrude tool now so shift E to extrude this out to the length that it needs to be and about right there and actually I'm going to undo that because if you notice there's a slant right here and that's because I wasn't constraining so always make sure you constrain alright and now that's nice and straight space key to end that tool and this time we did it correctly so we don't have to flip around our polygons and we're going to grab these end polygons right here 
and now we're gonna give that a bevel so hit B on the keyboard and just pull it out and it's being really weird right now actually because the points are so close together on the ends here we're not going to be able to bevel that so instead we're going to use smooth shift and go in and manually edit the points if we have to so shift and F right mouse click T on the keyboard for move and we're just going to move that out making sure it's flush with that other section and now we're going to do our best to stretch this inward and if you notice which is why it's sometimes it's a lot easier to use the bevel tool because it will automatically constrain inward towards all sections and you can use smooth scale also to do this but it can be a little unpredictable and we're just going to use what we have right now and now go in with the polygon still selected and edit the points and once we're done with this side we can go ahead and knife down the center and then we can mirror it on the other side so I'm just using the drag tool right now control T and I'm just gonna drag these points into place just so that we have a pretty even edge around and we might have to bring it in a little farther in some areas and move this downward pull that out and then these we're going to use constrain and just drag them out and these are just some of the things you have to deal with when you're modeling with polygonal modeling only which is why sub patching can be nice for some things but in some cases polygons look a lot better than having sub patches so we're just going to continue going around the edge actually we're going to fix that a little there and just going through and editing these points the edge here and we're almost done and then what we can do is cut the polygon and we might cut the section 2 for the bevel and have a sharp edge on it and which is a technique we could have used as above but we chose a different technique just to kind of show you the different options that you have when you're modeling and now everything is in place. Hit zero key on the keyboard to go back to our view. And now if we take a look at that, we have the polygons facing the wrong direction. So what we're going to do, is actually first we're just going to cut it down the center and delete that back part. And now all of these polygons are facing the wrong direction. Now we could go through manually and select all these. But the easiest way is just to go and select this whole area, hit F on the keyboard, flip all those polygons including the center one and then just flip that center one back. And then it looks good. So what we're going to do now is we can mirror that over and we should be directly on the center here. We can take a look make sure those are connected and they are and now we're going to give it our surface that we have bef on the other part and actually this can just be scope nernies because it's pretty much all the same so it's all going to end up being the same and now if you notice here are smoothing errors 
And all we're going to do to fix that is just cut and paste by s after selecting each of the side polygons, and that'll take care of that. And we're also going to add knives down the sides to fix some of those other smoothing problems and also give a little more curvature if you see right there and now as you can see right here the polygons have disappeared and that's because we had another layer open at the same time and when we cut and pasted it pasted it to the the layer that was closest to zero so it did in, it pasted in the fourth layer instead of the fifth so all you have to do is just select those polygons cut and paste them back in and not merging them and make sure that we don't merge them because otherwise we'll get all of those smoothing errors back and we're going to take a look and see how that looks and add it to the scope and we get just a little bit of definition in there just as much as we need just to pick up a little bit of a highlight but not too much and we'll add it on the rest of the pieces and see how it looks and actually I don't know if you noticed this or not but we modeled this the wrong on the wrong side and that is this curve on the bottom here should actually be on the other side so that's an easy fix all we have to do is we're going to copy and paste that into another layer what we just modeled and now we're going to mirror it right there and now if you notice to mirror uh, will automatically merge your points actually undo and if you pull up the numeric you can just turn off merge points and that way you don't have to worry about it affecting what we've done to correct smoothing so we delete that other section and now we can put the other one in the background layer and match them up and that looks good go back and delete this previous layer and now take a look at it and as you can see now we have it on the correct side so there's one more thing we need to add to this before we can go ahead and copy and paste these over and actually there's a couple things in the f on the other side too that we need to add so first of all I'm gonna cut this and paste this into the front layer this blank layer here and actually go ahead and cut and paste this section onto here and that's just going to free up another layer and kind of separate these two from the rest and I moved that by accident Let's see if it's still in place and yeah, it is and you can see the gun is starting to really come together but now we need to add there's little sort of screws and they're not quite screws though because they don't have any spot for a screwdriver to go into so they're more like a rivet and we're gonna go ahead and add those and it's just actually one but when we mirror it over and copy the section we'll have two and this is actually just something simple uh, we can take a look at the perspective view for this or even just looking at the back view you can see them right here just round circles and nothing more and look at the perspective view and you can see it for another angle and the nice thing about having more angles too is uh, depending on how shiny the surface is it will pick up specific highlights around certain areas and you can see exactly where specific parts of the model are that you can't tell that they're there when you're just looking at the standard reference photo and I'm gonna go ahead and go to display display options by hitting D on the keyboard go to backdrop bottom right and I'm gonna switch this from front to back and by doing that now we can see where those need to go and you can, all right and we're in 
a new layer. We have these in the backdrop. So now we can go to the ball tool or a shift and O. And I'm constraining so that I get a perfect sphere. If you can constrain on just on one viewport, you'll get your disk. And then if you open it up on another viewport and then start constraining after that, it'll stay a perfect sphere the whole time. And we can just make it a little bit bigger. We're going to pull it up. Uh, actually, bring that in and view. And size it down. Okay. And now we want to create sort of a inset in the back. So we're going to use the stretch tool and just stretch that in. And then we're also going to grab the front polygons and use the stretch tool again, H on the keyboard, and move that in. And that's just so it's not so round because the actual object is not that round. And then you can move that into place. And we're still going to leave that little bit of a lip in there. And if you want, you can go in and delete the polygons that are completely inside the object. And just hit the delete key. And that way, you don't have to worry about those interfering or adding too much geometry to the model. And now it doesn't look like it's centered. And we have this, since we also have this knife we added here and we mirrored it over, we know that that line is the perfect center. And this image reference is off just a little, as you can see it just a little bit from the other one and that's just because we couldn't line it up completely but it still gives you an idea and you can always use the other side to sort of reference it and move back and forth and like I said switch between the perspective views to figure out what you need to do and we'll take a look at that right now and I'm going to push zero key on the keyboard and the perspective view and so we can take a look see how it's all looking as it's coming together here. And that looks like it's going pretty well. Hit zero key on the keyboard again. Get back to our view and now we're gonna add that other piece on the other side of this, that sort of piece that goes right here before we add the large knobs onto it, or large screws actually. Okay, we're going to draw a box for this. So the box tool, create box or shift in X, and we're actually going to throw that other section into the back layer because we're going to need that as a reference. And the easiest way to see this piece right here is actually by looking at the perspective view. And if you take a look at it, you'll see that it curves sort of around it and that it's mainly straight on the ends. And, oh, I forgot to expand this on the other direction. So we can undo that, open the box tool back up. If we hit numeric, it will pull up exactly what we had before and now we can move that over and we can leave it where it's at right now just as long as there's a little bit of depth because we can just go ahead and stretch that out later and I'm gonna use the smooth shift actually I'm gonna T and move that in a little first and now grab that polygon and move it down just a bit and smooth shift so shift F right mouse click T to move, and then Y to rotate, and then smooth shift again, right mouse click, T to sort of move it a little, and then Y to rotate that again, and then smooth shift one more time, right mouse click, T to move, Y to rotate, and now H to pull it in and stretch it just a little and we'll do the same thing on the bottom 
first we're going to move it up a bit. Smooth shift, shift F, uh, right mouse click, T to move, Y to rotate, and we're just slowly working in and around. Smooth shift again, right mouse click, T to move, Y to rotate, and we're also going to H and stretch that. So we change the size just a little. Smooth shift again, T to move. Smooth shift one more time, and Y to rotate, and pull that in. Okay, now we also need to add our sort of bevel on the sides right here, so we can pick up our extra bit of light and highlights. And for this, we're going to actually smooth shift it and not bevel it. Cause if we, I'll show you what happens if we bevel it. If we bevel it, it'll take each, each individual polygon and do it all together. So I'm going to undo that. And smooth shift, right mouse click, and T to move. And we're going to move it out just a little bit. And now we're going to use the drag tool. Hit zero key on the keyboard, on the number pad, to pull this up few, full view. And then control T for drag and we're going to drag each of these points in and it's not a very complex object or piece so we can do this pretty quickly and also because I use the box tool I don't really have to worry about making these be in line by dragging, copying and dragging points over because we know when we use the box tool it is perfectly straight. And now we also want to knife it right here to add our extra bit of smoothing and f sort of fix that area. And we'll add one more so it's a little more rounded. Okay. And now we're going to use the mirror. So shift V and undo that because we are not lined up. So shift V again and now we should be perfectly lined up in that line. Sometimes you just gotta zoom in a little to get to that snap. The grid snap that's with it. And now we can move our side polygons into place. And we're moving out just a little bit beyond on both sides. So it's going over it just a tiny bit. And if we hit D on the keyboard and go to our backdrop settings and change this back to the front view, now we can see this large knob we're going to have to throw in there. And we'll take a look at that so far. And that looks good. And now we're going to model this screw. And before we do that, we'll just cut and paste these other pieces on the same layer because they are complete and we don't really need to worry about it. Okay. And for our screw, we're just going to use the disk tool and start at the center of the screw and pull it out on both sides and sort of move it into place. Actually, we're going to size it down just a bit. Constraining, and once I constrain, it will pull it out on this other side, but we can just move that back. And we'll drag it in a little farther, just because we are going to have a bevel on the edge. And move that into place. And plus, with the, the pixelation on here, it makes the object appear a little bit larger than it actually is. And we're going to move it out. actually these are a little farther out and then we're gonna add another disc in there or we can just bevel it inward until we reach that area but first we need to define what actually makes this look like a screw and that's the head of it and we're gonna take this polygon just the front polygon 
and now select points about right here and here. Uh, actually, down just a little bit because this is our center. We want to go one up, and we're going to hit Control L and split that polygon. And now we, if you notice, we have four points selected both sides. But if we go to polygon mode, we only have the front polygon selected, so we'll only split the one polygon. And we're going to select those bottom points now on the other side of the center, and Control L and split those. And now what we can do is take these newly created polygons, just the two new ones, and verify that it's just the two selected, and we're going to add a bevel from that point on. So it be on the compute uh, on the keyboard, and just move that into place just a little. And right mouse click again, and we're also adding our smoothing, fixing our smoothing with this. On these sections anyway, and the center sections right here are gonna need a couple of knives. So shift K for the knife tool. And now you can see this is perfectly flat and these are perfectly flat. But we might want to add another one in there and now you can see there's an extra little highlight that really shows off how that's going in. And you want to make sure when you're adding these knives that you're going in between these points right here otherwise you'll get some weird looking polygons. And we're going to add another knife and one more. And that looks pretty good. And we'll just rotate this because it is slightly askew. And we'll rotate it after we finish the back part. And we're going to take this back polygon. And if you notice, because we've knifed, we've created all these extra polygons in here. So Shift Z to merge those and hit B on the keyboard for bevel and bring it in, right mouse click, bring it in again and now we have a nice round edge on the back of there and we're going to create another disc first we're going to move this up and I want this in center with this right here and that looks about center, I'm just going to eyeball it and we're going to select the disc tool, create disc we don't really need to do this on another layer. And we're going to go from what looks like the center. And this part of the object won't be really seen that much. And make that a little bigger. Pull that out. Make sure this is going inside the other object. Hit the space bar. And now we have our connector. And we don't really need to worry about this section too much. Unless you want to go ahead and connect these. And what you can do for that is actually just delete the cylinder and use the bevel tool to come around and mark that out. But you're not really going to see that in the model. So we're going to leave it how it is. And delete these extra polygons in here. Because you won't see them and we don't need them. Okay, zoom out. And throw this in the other layer and make sure these are pretty much centered and it looks like it is and now we're going to go ahead and use the rotate tool which is Y on the keyboard make sure we select our action center to selection our mode for the mouse and we're just going to put it askew just a little and now we can cut and paste this onto the other layer and now we have that front knob done or the screw. And there's another thing we need to add to this, just one more thing, and that is we need to make screw holes on each section throughout here. And there's going to be eight total. And we could just copy and paste those over and then do a boolean. So we're going to start a new layer and put this in the background. You can see the holes right here, so you can kind of get an idea of how big they need to be. And we're going to use the disk, so create disk tool. 
and middle mouse button to constrain or control and left mouse click to constrain so that we get a nice circle here and kind of move that into place maybe make it a little bit bigger and zoom in so we get a little more leeway with it and now we're going to move that down using the T and we want the screw to go through all the way down to about here we're going to take that top polygon hit T on the keyboard and just move it up and what we also want to do now is mirror down this center and we still have our center knife from our other section down here so we know exactly what the center is and since these are flush and lined up we can just mirror down that line and we're going to take a look at those together and see where those holes are going to be because we're just going to be boolean subtracting Okay. and now we can go ahead and mirror these over to the other side and we also need to mirror them down and these ones we might bring up just a little bit higher selecting them T on the keyboard for move alright that looks good now we're going to put those in the background layer hit shift B and that's going to bring up our boolean tool make sure it's set to subtract and click OK and we'll take a look and see how the cuts look and those look pretty good. We could also add a little bit of inset by going in and actually grabbing all the polygons in here and then smooth shifting them and dragging them in a little but we're not going to worry about that right now just to keep the tutorial a little shorter but it's the same way we did before. You can just select all these polygons, smooth shift, and use the stretch tool to pull them in a little bit and pull them down. Now we do need to add screws in the inside of here. And these we can just use a sphere again. So we'll go to the ball tool in a new layer. And just with this other piece in the background and make a sphere and right there and actually because I started right here we get these round polygons or the round sections facing me and I want them to face upward so hit Y on the keyboard to rotate and if you constrain you'll make sure you get it a nice 90 degree turn on it H on the keyboard to scale it down because we don't want them sticking out too far and they're just screw heads so they don't need to go out too far. And now we're going to use the size tool because it is a little bit smaller than it, we want it to kind of intersect on the sides. So shift and H for the size tool and just make it a little bit bigger. And you can see that over here. Now we want to position this up on top. So T for move. And just position it so it's equal on both sides. Okay, and we can delete these bottom polygons. And now we're going to give this a different surface name. We're going to call it Scope Top sc Screws. And OK. And we're going to define the surface on that really quick. So we'll bring up the surface editor. So Control F3 or F5, or click on the button right here, depending on your keyboard layout. And we're going to copy the silver sections and just paste it onto the top screws and that will pretty much be the same surface. These will actually be a little more silver but it will work for right now. Okay, now we can shift V for mirror, mirror it over and mirror it down the center again and now we've got all our top ones in place and mirror it down on the bottom and then we'll have to manually move these down 
and these ones we don't want really sticking out too far just because we don't have the cut going as far in but that should be good we can take a look at that and that looks really good another thing I wanted to mention too is after you boolean subtract when we boolean subtracted these holes we did not merge those points just so we don't screw up the smoothing and that's so we don't have to select them and cut them afterwards because when you do do a boolean subtract normally you're going to want to merge those points together because if you look if I change this to wireframe shade and we can take a look at the actual points right here and I select that point and what looks like one point it's actually two if you look in the selection and that's just because those two objects aren't merged together and we're going to leave it like that but normally after you do a, po a boolean subtract you're going to want to merge the points together which is just M on the keyboard and change this back to texture mode and we're going to hit S on the keyboard really quick just make sure we're saving what we do and I haven't saved in a while and now this scope section is complete and we can cut and paste those new screws into this other layer and we can delete our cutting tools and now we'll move copy and paste and move this into place where it's supposed to go on the other section so select all of this and always make sure you're selecting all of it when you copy and paste because otherwise you'll just overlay the object onto itself and you won't be able to move it because the points will all be in the exact same place and you'll have a bunch of extra polygons and merging it won't take care of that so just make sure you have it all selected before you go and copy and paste anything Thank you. and copy and now paste so control C control V or C and V if you're using 7.0 default keyboard shortcuts which I am using and T on the keyboard to move that over and take a look and make sure that's in place and we want to make sure we take a look at this bottom section here and make sure it's going right up to it or a little bit over it and hit zero key on the keyboard in the perspective view we can take a look at what we have done so far and now the scope is complete and we're going to move on to creating the trigger alright we're going to get to work on the trigger section now and just this whole part right here and not the handle just yet and we're going to open up a new layer and put everything else in the background layer holding down the shift key and clicking the bottom tabs and we're gonna start adding points so shift down the plus key and right mouse click and create our points around the edges and just work out the shape of the trigger And if you notice the trigger, or this section we're modeling right now, it's a little weirdly shaped. If I go ahead and look at a, or, uh, open up a new layer just so you can see the image, you can see it comes up and then kind of curves down a little, goes back up and then comes back down. So we have to, we're going to try to keep up with that, but not do it to the point where it looks like we modeled it poorly. and just using control T for the drag tool just dragging our points into place right now and defining our curves alright and we're also going to need to add points up here will come across 
and it doesn't really need to be straight because it's going to go right into the barrel section of the model. But before we go ahead and create a polygon out of this, I'm going to copy these points and select the last layer and push paste and then go back to this layer. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm going to pull up if you hit the display options and go to backdrop and I'll set that to the back. Click OK. You can see that there is a lot more modeling that needs to be done for this other section and so once we create this other polygon we're not going to be able to just mirror it over we're actually going to have to go in and add more points for this section so we can model a little bit differently and add some more geometry to it so I'm gonna change this back now to the other side that we're working on backdrop and put it in the front and if you notice too that the images were off just a little but we can adjust them once we start working on the other section and these are this will be a good way to line them up is by looking at these points that we've just created but right now we're going to create a polygon so we're going to select the points in order and hit P on the keyboard and I'm going to go in and kind of clean this up a little so control T for the drag tool that looks pretty good and this extra little bar coming out right here if I bring up the perspective view you can see it's actually separate and a separated piece from that so we're gonna model that just as a box and then extrude that out later but we're gonna do that once we have the handle in there already and close that out and now we're gonna take these other sections, these points that we copied and pasted earlier and I'm gonna copy them again and paste them into this new layer and that's just so we're preserving those points and we don't have to worry about messing them up and then having to go back and take points off of our polygon and I'm gonna hit display on the keyboard and select backdrop and bottom right change this to the back image and now we do have to adjust it so hit D on the keyboard again and we're gonna go right back to that and now we can adjust bring it down a little and that looks it li like it lines up shift and plus again because we're going to create more points now for the rest of this section and just come up here around this corner down into the model uh, into the handle section and I'm going to come out a little bit farther up here and make a point up on top and we can delete this other point in here and these really don't matter too much. I'm just doing them to get around some of these other sections because this is all going to be inside. None of this is going to be seen once it's at this point and it doesn't matter how really how far back it goes just as long as it's not going back too far like around right here would extrude out of the handle once we model it. But I want to make sure that we have some points going around over here uh, around the section where this little inlay is. Okay, and now I'm going to create a polygon out of this, so select the points in order, and hit P on the keyboard. And if you notice now, it actually goes out a little bit farther than that. And I'm going to bring up our other section we got here. And we did do a little bit of editing, actually, since we copied that, so I'm going to move these points so that they're matching up because we want it to be the same on both sides and I'm also going to move these two points up here and since we're on separate layers we don't have to worry about the points overlapping 
and now we're going to extrude each, each section individually and then piece them together and I'm gonna put the rest of our model in the background layer so we can use that as a reference point on the front or the back view and we want to make sure that we're modeling each section on the right side and it looks like we need to change this back really quick so I want to work on that front section and BR oh, actually front and that changed our image settings as well so we're gonna have to remember negative three millimeters and negative four millimeters for when we go back and edit it again so three and four but right now zero and zero hit enter and clear that out and now this should be the side with the knobs but we're gonna take a look at a blank layer and yeah that's the side with the large screws so we're gonna go back to that side put everything in the background and this section is on this side of the model and the other ones on this side so we're going to shift E on the keyboard because now we're going to need to extrude this polygon and we'll pull it out about to right there looks like the size of the box maybe not so far out but right there and hit F on the keyboard to flip those polygons since they're facing the wrong way because we extruded in the wrong direction but that's okay because F always fixes that alright and now we need to do the same thing to the other polygon and we're gonna hit shift E on the keyboard and pull up the numeric which is automatically gonna extrude it to the same length that we had extruded the other one and click spacebar to end it and the tool F to flip it and now put this in the background layer and it looks like we're off just a little and it got moved so I'm going to move this other one into place because it looks like that's the one that got moved just hit T on the keyboard and move it up and now it should be fine and we're gonna whoop, undo and make sure we constrain when we move this over put everything in the background layer as it was before and now it looks like actually those are spaced apart a little too far so I'm gonna take hit T on the keyboard again undo it make sure we're constraining and pull it in yeah about right there should be good and then match it up on the other side and that's not perfect maybe we should zoom in a little bit more and we, now we can see a little bit better how to match that up and that's good We'll take a look at the two and with the rest of the model and see how that looks. And actually, that looks about perfect. All right, put these two on the same layer right now and actually go ahead and cut it and paste it so now they are on the same layer and not just showing the same layer and we need to build some polygons in here to connect the two pieces because we don't want to just add a box in here because it'll add uh, kind of a nasty seam down the centers here and we don't want to cap it on the end because it'll add a seam on the sides but before we do that we need to split our polygons and actually add a few points on top and we might as well just do that with the knife 
so shift K and now we're gonna knife through both of these layers uh, about right th there should do it and so it's not too thick of a connecting piece not too far away and this is just an easier way and, and we'll have an extra little bit of geometry down here too by doing this so we don't have to split the polygon and we can kind of move those into place a little better and actually undo and actually move that forward a little using the drag tool so control T and now we can build our polygons right here and there's a real quick way we can do this we could either go in and manually select points clock in a clockwise fashion, the top points on there, hit P on the keyboard and build our polygons that way. But there's an even a quicker way, and that is to select the two new polygons that we have in the inside by knifing it, hitting Shift F on the keyboard, right mouse clicking, and that's for smooth shift. And then we're going to hit H on the keyboard for stretch, set it to selection mode so it's going to go to the center. But these could be off, these could be off just a little bit from each other, so we're going to set it to mouse mode and put this cursor right in the center and verify that position by looking at the lower left hand corner down here as you can see the position is at zero on the x-axis so we're going to constrain now and I'm doing it with the middle mouse you can do it with the control key and click and pull it together as close as you can and keep pulling it to the left until it won't move anymore and doesn't look like it's shifting at all then we're going to delete those polygons and hit M on the keyboard to merge the points and now it should merge six points and that's because we have one two three four actually let's take a look at this real quick and yeah one two three four and then five six on the top and now that should be connected we'll just sub patch it really quick hitting tab just to make sure it is completely connected undo that and what we can also do now is take these polygons and select them and hit shift Z and just merge them because we don't need that line down the center and it'll just throw off our bevel if we do one Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to add a bevel to this front section here. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and merge those three polygons as well. So Shift Z, and I'm also going to bevel these sides right here. And now, since we have our inside sections, we can go ahead and merge these as well. So Shift Z, and do the same thing on the other side and now we have perfectly unsliced polygons for our bevels and we'll just zoom in a little so we have more control without having to go to the numeric panel and what I mean by going to the numeric panel is if you hit N on the keyboard uh, hit B first so we bring up our bevel you can change the shift amount by using the numbers but I like to be a little more interactive about it and I'm gonna undo that really quick and if you're far too far away from the model and you bevel it has these very large steps in between each point and that's because of the grid snap I'm gonna undo that and now if we zoom in and we select bevel it'll give us a little more control. We're having a little bit of problem with that polygon right there. So actually I'm going to undo and deselect that front polygon just because we're having a little trouble and we might have to smooth shift that one. Just because it's jumping all over the place. Alright, hit B on the keyboard. Let's bring up bevel again. And now we'll just bevel these two sides. And we'll take a look. And maybe not out so far on that side just enough to add a little bit of an edge and now a spacebar to end the tool and 
actually it looks like this one went outward so just select that polygon T to move and just move that into place and now that looks good uh, before I continue I want to make sure and see how the smoothing is looking on this so I'm gonna give it a surface name and hit Q on the keyboard and just call it trigger box and then pull up the surface editor and we're going to copy from scope and paste it on the trigger box and now we get our smoothing and we can see how it's affected and now I want to have a nice smooth edge on there so I'm going to go ahead and try to bevel that again without bringing it outward at all and that might fix the problem so be on the keyboard and bevel seems to be acting a little strange right now that's alright just pull it down just a little and hit T on the keyboard and now we need to move it into place to match up that other section and that fixed our problem and now we have a nice smooth edge right there and no artifacts. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Zoom in nice and close. B on the keyboard. And I'm going to go back to numeric. I'm going to reset it. And now we've fixed that little problem we were having just a second ago with the bevel jumping all over the place. And that was because we still had the previous settings from when we typed in numerically and that was probably causing the problem that we had with the front polygon jumping around too. And I'm going to try to match it up with the other section and then spacebar and T to move and we'll move that so it matches up. Take a look, see how that looks. And now we have that nice edge and we don't have to worry about the artifacts, but that front is still going to need a bevel. So shift A after selecting that polygon to frame that. Hit B on the keyboard for bevel. And bring it in. And because we got that little problem, bring it in again without or trying not to pull it out too far or at all. And there we go. We've got a nice smooth edge around the corner. And now we also want to do the inside. Just a quick bevel in the inside just to add a little bit of a highlight. We don't really need to worry about adding that extra bevel in the inside to get rid of the smoothing problem because most of the inside we're not going to see, but we will see the edge and we don't want to have a real sharp crease in there and we don't want the polygons blending together. So after you select the three polygons, be in the keyboard for bevel again and just pull it in a tiny bit and now you can see we have a nice edge in there and actually for these inside ones we might see the smoothing errors along here depending on the angle we're at so I'm gonna cut them and paste them back into the layer and having a real close smooth edge on there doesn't really matter too much because it's in the inside but we still get our little bit of a highlight Okay, and now that portion of the trigger box is finished, and now we can move on to the actual trigger. And actually there's one thing we do have to do before this box is complete, one thing we forgot about, and that is the fact that we did merge points before when we created these new polygons in the new section, and we just need to delete those extra points in there. So just select them, hit delete, and actually undo because we deleted these top ones as well and we don't need to delete those so we actually need to delete well it looks like these three are actually four and uh, and that kind of screwed up the model a little And maybe that's just because we didn't merge. 
Ah, uh, that would be why. Those points don't need to be deleted. It's just that we have these new sections right here created, and those polygons are not merged, so it looks like these extra points we have in here aren't needed, and we can probably delete that one, but it'll screw up our smoothing, so we're going to leave it in. And So, in this case, merging polygons, we didn't have to delete any points at all. So now we can move on to the trigger. <laughs> Alright, the first part we're going to do is this kind of curve across here, and kind of the outside safety of the trigger. And we're going to do this by using a rail extrude. So we need to open a new layer, and we're going to put this other stuff in the background layer just so we have it in view. And we're going to lay out points again, just like we have for everything else. So shift and the plus key, and just right mouse click. And these don't have to be as tight because we're creating a spline out of it. And we'll just add a few basic ones right now, and then we'll go in and edit it once we've created the spline. Alright, control P will create our spline. And now if at any time you ever needed to create a closed spine, like let's say you needed to have these two points connect, uh, connected, you could do a closed spline, so we'll undo that. And now if you hit control O, that will make a closed spline. And that way, it's connected. But right now, we just want to do an open one. So control P. And now control T to edit the points. And we're just going to edit that to match up. And actually, it looks like we laid them out pretty well. And actually, that needs to come in just a little because it kind of curves up at that point. And we want to get these points in the center, or as close to the center as we can. Actually, we'll leave those where they are. And I want to set value on this polygon. And actually, a spline is a polygon. So in order to select a spline, you do have to be in polygons mode. And we're going to set value on this whole set of points and the spline itself, just because when we modeled it, we were off center just a little. So control V, or just V on the keyboard, depending on your layout. And this is on the x-axis, and value of 0, and click OK. And now we can deselect the spline, but actually before we deselect it, I want to show you something really quick. And it's important that you note where this little sort of diamond is. And you can see this diamond on the end of the spline. And what that is, is the starting point. And the starting point is pretty much the way you selected the points in order. So let's say I kill the spline right now and I start from over here and select the points from the other side and before we select it the other way and now I hit control P select that polygon and if you take a look now the diamonds on the other side and the starting point is very important especially if you're gonna be using it for rail extrudes and the only time that noting where the front is not important or where the beginning of the spline is is when you're doing spline modeling and patching but right now we're doing a rail extrude, so we need to know that the starting point is right here. And we're going to leave it right here instead of over here, and that's fine. Now we need to open a new layer, and we're going to define the actual trigger section. And for that, we're going to create a box in this back view. Uh, the width of the trigger. And, or actually the width of the uh, protective part of the trigger which actually comes in just in between the two parts of the box on the outside so it should meet up just with that and now we're gonna hit the arrow the up arrow key on the keyboard twice 
and add two segments and all we need from this we don't need the polygons that created but we need the points so we're gonna hit spacebar to end the box and actually we're gonna pull this in use H for stretch and stretch it inward just a little and now we're gonna edit these points on the sides and we're using these points just for rounding H on the keyboard for the stretch tool and we're gonna pull it inward and we know this is centered because when we created the box we had the crosshair right in the center so it doesn't matter whether you're in mouse mode or selection mode but keep it in the middle either way because it'll help you out and we just want to create a rounded edge and actually we should pull it in just a little bit more and now to fix the smoothing on it we're gonna add a knife on this side and a knife on this side and as you can see I'm off a little and it's a little hard to tell so the easiest way is to knife it on the center and we're still working with polygons so it doesn't really matter and we can delete these polygons on the left shift V for mirror and mirror down the center and then we can delete the excess points that we have so we're going to hit K on the keyboard now to kill those polygons and select the points in here and hit the delete key and we can also delete these center ones so delete those as well and now we're going to create a new polygon just by selecting these points in order and hitting P on the keyboard and now if, in order for a rail extrude to work we need to make sure we have the spline in the background which we have and we're going to move the polygon into place to meet up with the spline and actually at this point I'm going to move it down here to what looks like the straightest part of the object and as you can see we made it way too small so we're going to go in here and zoom in a bit and hit H on the keyboard and now stretch from the center outward and now you can see the width of that and we also need to pull these points out to match up so it's nice and rounded so H on the keyboard and now stretch from the center of those points and pull it up and now we get a round edge these bottom ones need to come down so T on the keyboard oh, undo make sure you're constraining T to move them and deselect and maybe because and if you notice because of all the pixelation it's a little hard to tell exactly how wide it is so maybe we'll size it down just a little and that's just part of the anti-aliasing of the actual image and that should be good and now we can use that size maybe we'll actually pull these points in a little bit more so we'll have a little more rounding and actually I do want to edit this just a little more because I think now that I know that it is a little bit bigger than I had it before I'm gonna add a little more geometry to it so I'm gonna knife it down the center just so that we can mirror over what we change add another knife right here and another knife right here and drag these points over and I'm also gonna create a knife right down the center so we define our smoothing it's going to add a lot more polygons, but I think it'll look a lot better if we do it this way. So I'm going to hit K on the keyboard again, and now we can delete these center points that we created. And actually on this side, delete, shift V on the keyboard, and mirror those over. And once again, select the points in order, P on the keyboard, and now we have our polygon and we're going to hit T on the keyboard again and we're going to move it up to the starting point on the spline and we want to put our middle point right on the end hit Y on the keyboard to rotate Let's change the mode to selection and that's going to rotate right from that center point now and it is off just a little but we can move it back in place and what we want to do is make it perpendicular to the spline and as close as we can to it 
and that's because the starting point it's just going to start cloning pretty much or extruding and adding segments all the way around on the spline and now depending on what you have in the background layer I only have one spline in this background layer so I don't need to worry about it interfering with other ones but just to be sh sure <laughs> and just to be safe I'm only gonna put the spline in the background layer just the spline polygon and keep this new polygon by itself and I'm gonna move it just a little bit and now it looks like we can rail extrude it and the rail extrude keyboard shortcut is control R and this is a single rail extrude you could also extrude with two splines and let's say if we had it a lot fatter on top and skinnier on the bottom we create a spline around the outside of each part so let's say it curved down here like this we create a spline for that section going out like that and another one that would come around the other end and that would be a multiple extrude and not just a single and that would extrude that and change its length or its width rather uh, along that spline but right now we just have a single because that's all we need because it's the same throughout and we're going to select uniform knots if you haven't used rail extrude before then you'll need to know what uniform lengths and uniform knots are uniform knots will group together what we have 20 segments 20 is the amount of segments that we're going to be creating along here and with knots on it'll create the segments closer by the curves so I'm going to do that right now just with the 20 and you can see they're a lot closer along the curved areas and I'm going to undo that control R again and now do it as lengths and that will create equal spacing throughout and depending on the type of object you're doing uh, usually when you're doing curved objects you're definitely going to want to do uniform knots and I'm actually going to crank that up just a little bit to 30 just so we make sure we get all the definition in there and take a look at that and actually now that I'm looking at because I still have the perspective view up on the other monitor that I have I'm noticing that the trigger box is actually a little narrow and we want to make it just a little bit wider and I'm going to show you that right now we'll just pull the front perspective and you can see it is actually quite large but that's an easy fix all we have to do is grab our points on this side hit T on the keyboard to move them and move it to about there and we're going to do the same thing on the other side moving it to just before that grid right there and the reason I didn't use the stretch tool for that was because I didn't want to modify the distances between uh, the size of the box because I know that that's the size that I want the thinness along here and if I was to stretch it it would make that larger and it could, would also edit what we have right here and how close that is now it looks like this is actually a little bit large now but it's actually about pretty close uh, maybe I'll go ahead and select a few of the polygons hit the right bracket key to select connected and hit H on the keyboard because this time we can narrow down the whole thing and just pull it into the center just a little bit making sure that we constrain and that looks pretty good and we'll throw it on the rest of our model just to take a look and see how it is and that's matching up fairly well and now that looks like it's actually the correct size okay and now when you do a rail extrude you still have your spline left over in another layer and we're not going to need it anymore because we're finished with it so we can just hit delete that from the layer and we're going to keep this on another on this its own layer right now and the box on another layer right now just because we're working with these areas and just in case we want to only show one area or one part of the object and not another we won't have to worry about moving it around and now we're going to work on the actual trigger. 
So first we're going to start grouping everything closer to the center. And actually these mounts we won't be working on anymore. So we might as well just cut these and put these on the actual scope. And we, st we still have a lot of work to do on the actual barrel. So I'm going to keep that on, on its own layer. But this other part right here doesn't need to be edited anymore. So we can cut that and paste that with the rest of the scope. And now we have all these free layers. And granted, you do have unlimited layers if you move with the arrow key uh, next to the layers up here. But I always like to work with the first 10 layers because it's a lot quicker and easier. Okay, and I'm going to group these together. So I'm going to cut and paste just so they're right next to each other and start a new layer. Put these in the background. And now we're going to do the same thing we've been doing the whole time, which is laying out points. And when you're doing polygon modeling, and especially if you're using an image reference, you're definitely going to be creating lots of points and doing a lot of it manually. So I'm going to hit Shift and the plus key and start laying out our points. And the reason I do prefer using points more and doing it manually is just because, granted, we could create a single-sided box and sort of smooth shift that down all the way through here, but we don't have as much control over the shape of the object that way. And actually, we're going to model this all the way up into the section and I'm also going to add some more points over here that go up into it and I can't really tell what the inside trigger looks like it probably doesn't look like that but this way we don't create such a large gap in case you're underneath the model looking inward you won't have such a large gap to look at and there'll be something inside and we're probably going to add an extra little piece of something in there just to cover it up Actually, we can deselect these points and delete some of those top two because it doesn't need to go quite that high or that far. But now we're going to zero key on the keyboard while our cursor is in this bottom right viewport. And now we can go in and define the actual trigger. And it doesn't look like I created enough points in here. So I'm just going to drag ones from the other sections the other curves and and the problem with this is it's not perfectly straight throughout so you actually do need a lot of points to define see how this kind of curves up and then back and over so we have to add lots of points we might just have enough but we can just drag from the other pieces that we have and we'll bring one down here and actually we are going to add a few so shift and the plus key right mouse click and just make some more and we can always delete them if we need to if we have too many but with an object or a piece like this I'd like to have a lot it'll add a lot more geometry to it but that way we know it's precise and correct and that up there will move. And coming over here and sort of the heel of it. And we need to define this a little bit more over here. And I'm going to add a few more points just so we make sure we have enough. And we also have this curve down here that you can see and I'll just kind of continue that up into here and that looks like it should be good maybe move that point right there and this trigger looks like it needs or the point of it these points look like they need to come down just a little and that should be good. Now we're going to create a polygon out of this. Select our points in order. And coming around and hit P to create our polygon. And now we'll zoom in a little 
and as you can see we have a few errors here so we can just edit that and take a look and if you want to you can create the polygon before you go and edit all the points I like to create it after I get the basic outline done just so I know I have enough points and I don't have to kill the polygon and reselect because it can be pretty time consuming going around and selecting all the points in order and then finding out that that polygon is incorrect so I'm just gonna go ahead and drag these and match them up a little better and define our curves a little bit better and that looks like that will be good maybe edit this point lots of tweaking involved when you're trying to get everything as close as possible and sometimes you can spend hours tweaking uh, we're not going to do that because then this tutorial wouldn't be very interesting alright I'm going to hit zero key on the keyboard so we can go back to our orthographic pr projection view and now shift E on the keyboard and we're going to extrude our trigger and we'll extrude it to about here T on the keyboard again to move it into place and then F to flip those polygons around because of the extrude it kinda went the wrong way and actually I'm gonna go ahead and stretch this in so H for stretch and just pull it in a little just because if you look at the perspective view you'll notice that it's pretty rounded so we're gonna need when we bevel to bring out those sections we create there the new beveled sections a little bit farther than we normally would just to create that nice round edge undo make sure we're constraining as we stretch that inward alright and now we're actually going to turn on symmetry just so we can do this equally on both sides because it is equal on both sides and actually that's not lined up uh, if I select that polygon right there and the other one doesn't get selected we know that these are not perfectly centered that this object isn't perfectly centered and you can tell right here that it's not and the quick way for that take care of that we'll have to move it upward and a little over reposition it but it'll really take care of it push F2 on the keyboard and now that is perfectly centered and we can just zoom in here move it back to where it was and now with symmetry on ah, make sure you turn symmetry off then hit F2 and then move it and now turn symmetry back on and grab that polygon and now we have both of them selected and we know that the object is symmetrical on both sides actually probably should move this over just a little because it did get moved out of place quite a bit alright grab those polygons again and hit B on the keyboard for bevel and we're gonna zoom in and we want to zoom into the kind of the end point right here because we want to see how far out they're coming and plus how big the curve is and we're gonna create our first one right there and right mouse click and create another one and not so far out but just a little and as you can see we're getting our smoothing problems right here so we're gonna right mouse click again and this time keep it straight and aligned on this axis and not pull it out at all and now we have perfect smoothing on that polygon and just adding that extra little bevel on there will fix all those smoothing errors and it looks pretty good nice and smooth all the way around we didn't have to cut and paste any polygons and have any separate points and this trigger is pretty much flat there's really no dimension to it so we don't need to worry about changing that at all and that's one of the nice things about this object is it a lot of the dimensional stuff does not change pretty much at all and we'll take a look at that with the trigger box and see how that looks and now take a look with the rest of the model and you can see it's starting to come together and as you can see there's also this silver section right here 
but I'm not going to worry about that until we finish the handle. And then once we finish the handle, we can add those bars across the tops right here, which you can see if I go to a blank layer, these bars right here, and we'll move those inward. And I'm going to go ahead and hit D on the keyboard, go to backdrop, BR, change this to back, and just take a look and see how that lines up. And that looks like it lines up pretty good. The image is off uh, a little tiny bit, but that's okay. And we're going to change this back to the front image. Oh, not perspective, uh, just the front. Hit OK. And now we have our trigger box complete, and we're going to move on to the handle. Okay, we're going to start working on the handle now. And I've gone ahead and taken every part of the trigger that we worked on, uh, the trigger box and the outside part, and just put it all in one layer. And I'm going to go ahead and cut that now, too, and paste it up in the front la three layers. And now I can also go to this last layer that we have here that we had copied points from before, and we can delete that because we don't need it. And now we have everything down in three layers that we have modeled, modeled so far. And we're going to start a new layer and hold on the shift key and click the tabs underneath to put everything in the background layer. And now we're going to start laying out our points for the handle. And the best way to do that is to make this viewport uh, maximized. So you can click this right here or you can hit zero on the keyboard. Or and the number pad specifically to make that full screen and shift and the plus key for our point creation tool or you could go up to create and hit points again and now we're gonna start right mouse clicking and just laying out our points and this is a straight line down to here so we can just go from there and work around. And this is pretty much straight. We're going to add a little bit and create some more points around here. And just pretty much get that nice rounded edge all the way around. And you can see this little piece sticks out right here. So we're going to add three and then read to define that. We'll go ahead and edit those after we're done laying out the rest of the points. And then three in here. And, and one, two, three, a couple around here. And we might need a few more around here and right here. And we'll define this area and add a few points up here. and a few more right there and I will deselect all our points and hit control T for our drag tool and now go in and edit to define our curves in here that we have and I'm using three to define all the major curves or the smaller curves and view the shadow over here so we can actually move that inward and I ha even though this is pretty much straight through here there is a little bit of curve once we reach this section but if we keep these points in here we'll have the geometry that we need as we're extruding this out to make that curve more prominent as we get to that section of the model. And we'll bring these inward. And actually these look like they should come in just a little bit more. And we'll pull that inward and make that more of a tighter curve in there. These look pretty good. Maybe about right there. And this back section doesn't really need to be changed at all. And move up. And edit this a little 
and this is going to be a real sharp curve in here and actually that's almost completely sharpened but we still want to have kind of a little bevel on there so we're going to do that and we'll move these points inward and tighten that up a bit and make this curve a little more defined okay and now this is going to be straight all the way across here so we want to take this point over here, delete it, select this one, copy, paste, T to move, constrain it all the way over, and now we know we're going to have that straight line. And we'll move that down to match up. Okay, and now we can create a polygon out of it. And actually, uh, I'm going to turn off symmetry because I still have that on from before and we want to make sure we turn that off when we're not using it. Uh, in this case it doesn't really matter because we're working on this layer and it just keeps all our points in the center. But uh, to make sure they really are in the center and they're not, we're going to use Control v on the x-axis or V for a set value and, just, and click OK and now they're centered and go back into this layer zero on the keyboard, pull it up full screen, and now we're going to zoom in a little and start selecting these points in order. And some of these points are kind of blending in with that background color. So you could go in and change that if you need to. Uh, we're just going to leave it how it is right now because once we get these selected it's really not going to matter too much anymore. Okay, and finish these up, and hit P on the keyboard. And actually, this curve we needed to find just a little bit more, so we'll go ahead and tweak that. And there we go. Zero on the keyboard again, on the number pad. And control A to frame that. And now we're going to extrude it. So shift E, and we're going to extrude out to about, keeping mind of our, actually, flip these polygons really quick and take a look and see how far out that comes. Just because we don't want the handle to be too wide or too narrow. And maybe we'll pull it in just a little bit more. Oh, undo. Make sure we change our mode to mouse and go from the center. And, uh, and make sure we're constraining. And we just want it so a little bit comes out on that end right there. And zoom in here. And actually, I'm going to go ahead, before I do anything else, and take these points on the side over here and set value to those again. Because uh, after we did a little editing there, it changed it. Just make sure it's zero. And we're also going to take these points again and copy them, put them in the last layer, and paste. Because this section of the handle is completely different than the other section of the handle. So we're going to keep that, and I'll put everything in the background. And we need to edit this polygon, this outer polygon, to match up with this inside part right here. Because we're not going to worry about defining the curve just yet. We want to fit this polygon, the inward one, to what's going to be the inmost section. And actually, I'm going to go to points mode really quick and just move that set of points over here out a little just to find that curve a little bit better. But we go back to polygon mode and now we can go ahead and edit all these points and kind of move them where they need to go. And 
and for that we're actually well we'll do zero on the number pad and shift A to frame of view and we're gonna use stretch real quick just to give us an idea of where the points are actually I can pull it in and make it real small because this <laughs> we're obviously not gonna leave it like this but if we deselect this polygon now and start selecting points we'll be able to separate them a lot easier from the background points without having to destroy any of the polygons that we have there and we just want to move these sort of into position and these and actually go back and undo that because if you look those points don't really need up here don't really need to be edited too much so we want to keep those top ones where they're at so we don't have to go and individually move those and it'll save us a little bit of time so we'll select on this side over here and these ones need to be edited so we can select up a little bit higher and then deselect actually we just want to make sure we don't select these top points alright and bring that up full view again shift A on the keyboard and H to stretch these points inward just so that we can work with them now alright deselect all of them and I'm going to select these on the side over here and position these in place and I'm going to do the same with these and I'm also going to need to edit this piece a little bit so it comes out and this needs to be edited and I want to undo I want to move these over a little and we're kind of using this shaded area right here along with the highlight and actually because of the lighting it looks like it dips in but in reality that's just caused by the sort of treading that's on here and that really is not an indentation and you can tell by looking at the perspective view for that and I'm H on the keyboard for stretch I'm gonna move these out and I am in mouse mode right now so I'm just going from this point moving it upward and I'm gonna go ahead and edit this down here because these do need to come in actually a little bit about right there and this will H on the keyboard and we'll stretch this back up and T to move and move it inward a little and we want to make sure it's inside of where this large indent is going to be and we might even move these ones down because of that because we're going to need room to cut that and actually these ones we're going to manually move so we'll go in and using the drag tool control T just moving these into place and these ones actually should be about where they were before we'll move them out just a little and now we need to edit this last section so we can grab these points T to move and move them into place right there and maybe drag those down a little or move them down actually and we're going to define this curve a little bit better because it got a little messed up and looks like it this curve comes out a lot more in this part of the section so we'll just make it fit that lighter area and up to about here and just going in and we don't want to set our points off too much because if you see right here we don't want too many angles just because that is going to be a tricky area to model in a little bit once we start defining the curvature and we can go in and actually we have a freestanding point right here 
and that's one we missed while we were creating our polygon because of this gray background and we missed it so we're gonna go in and make sure we delete that on our copied layer and delete these here and now edit actually undo we're gonna bring other points from our copied layer just so they're lined up because we're gonna need those and fix out that curve to match up with that you could go back and redo the polygon if you wanted but I'm gonna leave it where it's at right now and I've pretty much fixed it and now these points should line up and they do and what we're gonna do before was grab these points and move them up to match in with this section right here I'm gonna hit zero on the number pad again bring it out now if you take a look it's kind of coming together uh, but it does look a little boring at this point so we need to add our curve around the edges and the best way to do that is to use the knife tool and I'm gonna actually make sure first that we have this out as far as we want it to go and I'm gonna use this box as a reference and actually it does look like we need to pull it out a little bit more So select those points on the side, T to move, and just pull them out. And that looks like it's about the distance. Maybe a nudge, just a hair. Oop, undo, make sure we're constrained. Just a hair inward. Yeah, about right there. Just a little bit of tweaking. Alright, and now we'll add our knives. And we're just going to add two. So we'll do one right here. And one right next to it. Uh, maybe a little farther over. Or in the center of this. And this one we made a little bit closer to the section because this is going to be rounded. And we needed to find that rounded curve on the bottom so we made it just a little bit closer just like we did when we're adding our points around here and you just have to keep in mind that you're working in three axes at all times when you're working in 3D and this look looks looks like it's gonna be need to be edited a little we'll worry about that later and right now we're just gonna add our curvature so we'll select our points down here except not the top ones because this part will be flat right here and all flat on top and we're gonna be using the magnet tool to pull these points down a little bit to give it the roundness so it fits to the barrel alright and we're gonna hit H on the keyboard now for stretch and the first thing we're gonna do is make sure we're in the mouse mode and click on the top point and stretch it down on this axis and I just wanted to find that bottom curve a little first and we gotta make sure that it's almost but not quite level with the other section and that's just so we get that nice round curve in there to match up with the model and now we also need to stretch it outward and what we're gonna do for that now is almost go in manually and do that just because we don't wanna throw off anything else so we'll bring that up full view hit control T and then constraining all these points and just move them outward so that they're about equal all the way around and the, actually we don't have to constrain all of it because we do want to keep our curvature and it's, when you're doing modeling uh, especially with polygon modeling there's a lot of 
manual editing that you're going to have to do in order to get everything just right and this is one of those cases where we can't just use the stretch tool and we have to go in there and manu manually edit those points and over here go in there and edit that just because the stretch tool kind of threw that off and we want to make sure we keep our polygons uh, these lines in between the polygons connecting the polygons actually uh, that we keep those pretty much straight at this point and if there is a curvature that we keep up with the curvature of it and we'll be working on that once we get our next section into place and this we'll leave alone for right now I'm at zero on the keyboard and take a look at the perspective view and you can see it's already starting to get rounded and now we're going to grab this other section of points that we made with our knife tool and go in and select them and we're going to do the same thing for this use H on the keyboard for stretch and pull it down just a little and you can see that curve in there and then go in and hit zero on the keyboard bring that up full frame and then just manually edit the points and as you can see this curvature coming in through here and we want to keep up with that throughout most of this model as much as we can because that will definitely be reflected upon when we're editing and that looks good over there this section down here is going to need a little bit of editing and we just want to move these points inward right now and that's why we still have them selected and that's just so we can't move any of the other points and that we so we know exactly what points we're working with and what section and then once we're done with this we can go and then edit the rest of them now this definitely needs a lot of work so we'll go in and these seem to be alright over here but this little sort of toe section I can deselect now all the other points you can click on the gray area to deselect everything turn drag back on and I want to make these curves going upward around right there and then changing a little bit as we go along and you're almost doing 3D in a 2D view just to keep up this section so it looks good still because if we leave it the way it is it's not going to be very rounded and it's just got to do a little bit of tweaking in here and we edited that point but that's okay and we are editing some of the outside points so actually that copied section we have from before we can just get another one from this model we're working on by selecting those inside points and I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at what we have so far in the perspective view and you can see that's coming together pretty good you notice some of the smoothing errors but we can take care of that by beveling it and we'll go ahead and do that right now so we'll grab that polygon hit B on the keyboard and we're going to zoom in so we have more control over our bevel and pull it out just a little Now that made that very straight, and if you notice too, we also have missing polygons. So we're going to do the same thing we had to do earlier in the model, and that is, and that's just because there is so many points with that polygon, there's a little bit of display error. 
So we're going to flip those polygons, with F on the keyboard, and then select that again, and F on the keyboard. And now you can see that fixed a lot of that. But we still have some smoothing issues. So I'm going to actually go back and select this beveled portion that we created. And I could go in and actually manually edit that, and that's what I'd normally do. But in this case, we want to keep the tutorial, keep it going. And we're going to hit B on the keyboard again, and we're just going to redo that bevel. And maybe this time, make it and go in just a little bit farther. Undo numeric and go to reset. And yeah, we're still having problems with it. And the reason I didn't want to go in and bevel this is because if you see we have some overlapping polygons right here, so we're going to have to go in and edit those. Just where they're real close, you'll get that. And we'll check over here, and we're getting some more of that. And that's one of the problems with working with bevels. And such a high-res polygon objects is that you'll have to go in and edit this kind of stuff. But that's alright, because the end result will be well worth it. And those look alright. Come down here. And maybe edit that just a little. And that seems to look alright. And maybe re edit that. And zero. And really zoom in there. And see how that looks. Alright, zero on the keyboard. Again, uh, control A to frame the whole polygon, all the selected polygons. And deselect that polygon again and select all the ones on the end flip and then deselect select that again and flip that and as you can see that looks a lot better you get a lot more curve in there we still have our smoothing area or error but we'll take care of that in a sec but overall that's starting to look pretty good so we're gonna grab that again and we're just gonna make another bevel uh, we might have to go in and edit it again but this time we're not gonna be extruding it outward at all. We're going to leave it flat on this axis and just move it inward over here and that will take care of our smoothing error. And we're still getting those flip polygons. And we're also getting a little more of distortion in here. So we're going to have to go in and edit that. and zoom into that a little bit better so we can see it because with the drag tool you can select more than one point at a time if they're close enough and in here <laughs> we actually have three points and if you don't want to keep zooming in and zooming in you can just select those points hit control A and then it'll zoom in all the way on those points or as far as light wave will let you zoom in depending on how close they are and define that curve. There we go. And now move on all the way down the object, making sure we get everything. And this needs to be edited just a tiny bit, not that much. Just want to keep that nice curve in there. And go back and take a look up here. And that looks good. Zero on the keyboard. Oh, sorry. Actually, zero up in the perspective view. And A. And then Shift A to take a look at that. And we still have to flip these polygons. So we'll go ahead and hit zero again. And select these polygons. And you could also, instead of flipping this top one, you could just select it or click on it and it'll deselect it. And you can flip the other ones. Oh undo. We went down a little too far, so we'll deselect that. And that's right, we actually have, in this case, since we didn't move it out, we can't just select that section. So we will go to the perspective view, and we'll have to manually select 
all of these polygons. And just move up a bit. And the fact that we have this middle one selected is not really a big deal. We can just deselect it. And F on the keyboard. And now you can see that it looks real good. And this bottom bar here might need a little bit of editing uh, to make it a little more smooth. We can pull these points down. Uh, actually, specifically these points uh, around here in this area, but mostly around in this cut around here. If you pull those downward a little, we can get a little more smoothing on that. Or even these ones right here, if I pull them down, it'll f take care of that a little, but then it edits right there. But we'll change that. And a little bit, and I'm undoing too far. There we go. And now we wanted to find a surface name for this really quick before we get started uh, editing the top. And Q on the keyboard, bring up our change surface dialog, and we're just going to call this handle. And then bring up our surface editor, so control F3 or F5, or clicking up here. It really depends on your layout. And we can just copy from the trigger box and paste on the handle. And we need to find this part right here because in actuality that is going to have that tread on it and that extra little bit of surface. And if you notice here too, these bevels kind of interacted a little too far with where that cut is. So we could go in and edit that as well, but right now what we're going to do is to make this polygon straight, we're going to edit these points because if you look at where the treading is, the grip actually, you'll notice that this section is not curved like the rest of it. So, control T for drag, and we're just dragging those points inward. And we might have to clean those up a little bit. We'll leave it the way it is right now, though. Hit Q on the keyboard and handle, and call that handle underscore grip. And, uh, okay. Let's see. And now we want to deselect that polygon, and we can pull up our surface editor again. Copy, and paste onto the handle grip. And then we'll go ahead and select that color and make it just a little bit darker so we can see what we have as the grip. And we're not going to worry about modeling that. We can take care of that uh, with a bump map in modeler, or I mean, in, uh, sorry, in layout for our texture. And when we render it, then it'll show up. I'm going to give a quick mirror really quick here. So Shift V and mirror down that line and just take a look. And oh, undo, and I must not be on the line, or at least I wasn't when I mirrored. So I'm going to try to mirror that again. And numeric merge points is on. Undo that. And actually, I'm going to have to go in and select these points. M on the keyboard, or sorry, V or control V for set value, make sure it's zero. And we also created a polygon in the back here and that might have been causing that problem. And that was because we extruded instead of smooth shifting when we pulled it out. But that's okay, we'll delete that. And that was probably the main cause of our just problem our problem right now. So we'll shift and V again and mirror that over. And now you can see we have a nice rounded part right here. And we have a little bit of editing to do down the side and also this section right here needs to be a little more defined of a cut but we're gonna kinda leave it where it is right now and you can go in and tweak it if you want we'll undo that because the other side is different and before we do any of our cuts or anything we're gonna switch over our images and start working on the other side of the handle
Okay, we're going to start working on the handle, uh, the back part of the handle. And now there's two ways we could do that, to start modeling it. And before, we were going to take our points that we have uh, from along the center line and start building it outward the way we did on the other side. But it might be a little bit quicker if we just mirror it over and we can make some cuts. And it won't be as precise, but it'll be a lot quicker and it should still look pretty darn good. So we're going to take this handle and we're going to copy it and paste it into another layer and then we're going to go ahead and mirror that and then go down and we can delete the other side and now we have the other side, the other part of the handle but we're also going to need to make some cuts and I've already gone ahead and taken the background backdrop image of the back and put it in there and I did have to make a few adjustments for it to line up because the images uh, don't line up exactly perfect and all I had to do for, this, for that is I'll pull up display options for you and show you uh, D on the keyboard for display options, go to backdrop BR for bottom right and I moved it negative nine millimeters on the Y and negative six on the Z and that lines up really good then with the way we had it before and now you can see the major changes right here. Uh, I'll select this polygon, the main polygon, in where the grip is, and you'll see that the grip on the other part, or the part we're going to be modeling right now, just goes down here and around. So what we're going to need to do is make a slice down here, and then we're also going to need to make a few s or split the points that we create along here, and bring that inwards a little because there's a little bit of a sort of inward bevel on that. So I'll just deselect this right now and we're just gonna put our new part of the handle in the foreground layer and actually we'll start a new layer and put that in the background layer. We can see that a little bit better and now we're gonna use the pen tool and you can go to create polygons pen and this is another way of creating points which already creates a polygon for you so you don't have to select them in order and then hit P on the keyboard. Of course we might need to edit these but this might save us some time instead of going in and having to select all of our points in order. And we're also going to need to bring this out beyond that section because we're going to be slicing it through here and then we're going to delete these polygons that it creates because we're not going to need those and then we're going to build some inward ones to give us this edge that we have in here. So I'm going to hit space to clear out the tool, uh, change to points mode, and deselect all the points and now I can go in and edit. Oh. Right, control T for drag and edit these points in here to give it a nice curvature and as you can see uh, the way our other side of the model is that we're going to be going through some of these points right here so we're going to need to also clean this up a bit uh, and we still want it to be close to the backdrop so we'll just clean that up after we slice it we're going to need to split a few polygons just so it looks fairly decent alright so now we can take our handle and put in the foreground layer and put our new polygon we just modeled in the background layer and we're going to use the template drill and that is shift R and we want to do this on the X axis so X and we're just going to be stenciling it actually and not slicing it and we'll try uh, see because if we slice it it's going to give us a little bit of weird weirdness with this polygon and we could just flip those but I'm going to undo it and go back and bring bring up that panel again which is once again shift R and do stencil and as you can see we did get the same effect except this time the difference between stencil and slice is this applied the surface of the polygon the slicing well the slicing polygon and took the surface of it and applied it to these polygons right here 
and I kind of like that just because I can see them in this perspective view and see exactly what it is we're working with and I'm going to grab these two polygons from the inside that got flipped the other way and hit F on the keyboard to restore them and everything looks like it's going to be okay now so now we have to go in and delete everything of this surface and the best best way to do that which is another advantage of using stencil over slice is we can push W on the keyboard and make sure you're in polygons mode and you can select the surface default because that polygon right there was modeled at default just make sure you assign it a name uh, it was automatically used the default texture for me but it might be different for you and you just hit the plus key and it'll select everything with that surface name and then you can hit delete, delete on the keyboard and now all that's gone okay and now we can delete this cutting tool and go back to our layer we're going to need to make a few adjustments here just as far as this main polygon and the best thing to do here is to select points make sure we have the polygon selected the main one and then we're going to select these two points right here and hit control L and that's going to slice it and we also want to make a slice up here and right here and that's just so we can bring these polygons inward a little and it does look a little different it doesn't look exactly like it curves in just a little it looks like it has a little bit of a dip in there but in actuality that's just the lighting and if I show you our finished model you can see the way that is and from the side here and it's just a small dip it's nothing major okay and we'll go back to the one we're working on and I'm gonna hit S on the keyboard to save it and now we might need to do a little bit of cleanup like down in here just because where the slices were at and I'm gonna hit zero on the keyboard with the cursor in that bottom right viewport and hit control T and now I'm gonna pull these down just a little and I can edit pretty much any of these points in here except the out the outer ones and in this case you do not want to be editing any of the outer ones because then it will not merge properly with the other side of the handle and I'm just gonna go in here and clean this up a bit and now I just for smoothing purposes I don't want to have any polygons greater than four points so I'm gonna go in here and select this polygon and grab these points and hit control L and then I'm also gonna grab these ones right here and hit control L and I'll deselect those, select this one as well and control L down the center and that's just going to keep us with 3.4 point polygons and mostly you have to worry about that with sub patches as you can see everything right here up until you get to something greater than 4 points there's a distortion but we don't want to have any smoothing issues and it's sort of tripling it in some areas which also corrects smoothing most of the time I'm gonna change this perspective view to wireframe because we're gonna need to start working in this inwards uh, set here and I also want to take these points on the side and start to kinda bring those in and I'm also gonna add a knife so control K and knife it about right there so we have a nice straight inward tilt that we'll be getting and that way too we add a little bit more geometry which is also going to fix our smoothing problems that we may ha encounter I'm going to select these points right here and these ones right here and we're not going to inset the whole thing we are going to make sort of a divot just a tiny bit and I'm just going to pull those in and as you can see I also have that first row poly our point selected so I'm going to go ahead hit spacebar the keyboard deselect those just so that we're not throwing off our merge later and that should be good we'll go ahead and split this top polygon as well just selecting the polygon and selecting to the points hitting control L and we'll take a look at that in the textured view
and that'll look a lot better once we get the surface names on there. We we'll also need to clean up this corner right here, which we'll be doing on both sides. Which we, I don't believe we edited it all, so we might be able to use symmetry on that. But now we can come in here and select these polygons, and we're going to apply the surface name handle, just handle, and now we just have the grip exactly where we need it, just in that piece right there. And now we can start bringing in that sort of inward those inner polygons and I'm going to switch this back to wireframe and now the best way to do this first I'm going to hit zero on the number pad and bring this up full view is we're going to create a polygon and with that polygon we'll just smooth shift inward and it's a lot easier than going in and manually creating points because that could take quite a long time and this is just a quick way of getting around that Alright, select them in order and hit P on the keyboard. And now I can set this back to textured view. And you don't have to worry about it being non-planar and that it's not displaying because that's this is not the polygon we're needing. It's the ones that we're creating with this polygon. So I'm going to hit Shift F on the keyboard and right mouse click. And I'm going to set mode to mouse and hit H on the keyboard for the stretch tool. And I'm going to go ahead and just pull this inward. Not a whole lot, but just enough because we want to start out with our initial curve just so we get our highlight once we're rounding over into this area. And all we're doing is just creating these segments in here. Alright. And it looks like I want to edit this section over here to make it a little more smooth and I'm also going to go in and switch this to points mode and edit what we have on the other side and that's just going to smooth that out a little bit more and now we're going to smooth shift this again so shift and F right mouse click H on the keyboard make sure that we're right on the center line here and then just start stretching it in and I'm, I'm going to hit Y to rotate and that's just so we get this inset all the way around sort of equaled and we might need to edit that just a little and you really just gotta play around with it to see what looks correct and like I said don't worry about these polygons we have in here we'll be deleting those we don't need them and then I'm going to go ahead and smooth shift it again and stretch and as you can see we're getting a little out of bounds here so we're going to have to stretch it maybe out a little hit T on the keyboard to move it and stretch it inward and, and about right there and that's just so we're getting nice and far into that other area. I'm going to switch to points mode really quick to get those polygons out of the way so we don't see them and bring in the other layer which is going to be connected to it and I just want to make sure it goes through all the way to here and once we get to this middle section right here this is also going to be taken care of with sort of a silver surface which I can show you right here you see this part right there. We'll go immediately into that so we don't need to worry about it having or going in too far so we can go ahead go back to polygons mode which now since we've changed the layer those polygons are deselected but that's okay because we can just go in the perspective view and highlight them and hit the delete key and we also have a stray right here so we can select that and those are just the extra ones that are created and that will happen when you're using the polygon to create those extra curves in there and this extra little bits of definition. Okay, and now it looks like we have that other side of our handle pretty much finished. We got a little bit of editing to do still, and we also need to start adding these little pieces on there 
to make it more unique on each side. And I also have a little bit of a problem with the smoothing on this side. So we're going to go ahead and select this polygon, cut it and paste it. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side actually. And since there are separate surfaces and it will be a grip, we really don't have to worry about it smoothing directly into the other part of the object and it should be fine if we leave it like that. Okay, so I'm going to cut and paste the handle both in the same layer and now we need to merge the two sides together. Now we don't want to merge it from this point because or just hit merge with all of it selected because then it's going to merge these polygons back together and what we can do is go ahead and select all the points down the center and just hit M on the keyboard and merge those because that's all we need merged. And it looks like we might have missed a couple in here. And we can go back. If you want, you can merge these back because it sometimes it's a lot quicker just to go ahead and deselect those or cut them and paste them back in. So I'm going to do that. And hit M on the keyboard to merge them. And now cut and paste and cut and paste. Okay, and now we're going to start working on these extra little details that we have to add in here. And we're going to start on a new layer and create our cutting tool because we're going to be doing this booleans. And as you can see on this side we are inside this polygon which is what we need but when we're working on, working on the other side we might need to delete that polygon and actually go in inward a little just because the other side this sort of screw in here expands out a little bit past so what we might go ahead and do is since we are just cutting and pasting this polygon in we don't need this extra set of sections that we've made in here which is right here, which is, should be perfectly level, and they are with each other, just to add, to fix the smoothing problem, since we're just cutting and pasting, we don't need that. So what we can do is go ahead and select all these polygons, and we're going to delete them, and then take our remaining points around the edge, and go ahead and create a polygon out of that but we're gonna hold off on that right now but this is what we'll be deleting and adding a new polygon to okay so we're gonna start a new layer and I'm also gonna hit S on the keyboard to save and we're just gonna put the handle in the background and now we need to make this inset and the best way to do this is also to use the stencil tool this time the stencil and not the slice tool or I mean the, sorry, the other way around, the slice tool and not the stencil tool. And we're just going to create a disk. And the amount of sides doesn't really matter beyond the default. Depending on how much geometry you want to have in this model. Actually, we might as well just bump it up. So I'm going to hit N on the keyboard to bring up that numeric again and hit 48 for the sides. Hit spacebar. And now I'm going to place that disk in the background and select this polygon right here oh, sorry on the other side actually select this polygon right here and we're gonna hit shift R for template drill and we're gonna be doing it on the x-axis and we want to slice it and hit OK and we can delete that cutting tool and zoom in and if you hit G on the keyboard while, while your cursor is over something it will center it to wherever your cursor is so hitting G you can center it right to that and then we can just zoom in and it makes it a little bit easier alright so now we're gonna select that polygon and now granted we do have this cut and pasted but we also want to expand and make sure that we're going to have smoothing on this polygon. So we are going to smooth shift. So shift F, right mouse click, 
and set our mode to or, or uh, selection constrain and bring it in just a little bit before we go ahead and start moving it and that'll just preserve our smoothing on this specific polygon I'm going to smooth shift it again and then hit H on the keyboard and stretch it inward just a little bit once more and now we can start to work on our rounding inward I'm going to hit T on the keyboard for move and we can just move it in just a little right now because we want to start working on our round edge in here oh, undo and shift F right mouse click again H on the keyboard and we're just going to go along and create that curve inside smooth shift again H for stretch T for move and it doesn't need to be in very far and we're also going to be adding sort of a a half sphere in there so we don't really need to worry about finishing off too much but we will add a little bit of smoothing in the inside shift F again and right mouse click H on the keyboard and then bring it in just a little and we also want to pull it down just a tiny bit this time and G on the keyboard to center that and zoom in you can also zoom in if you don't want to use the little magnifying glass up here you can use the period and comma keys to zoom in and out and I'm gonna go ahead and select that polygon and zoom in all axis and as you can see that looks pretty nice and we'll just go ahead open a new layer make a ball this time and we're gonna start the ball from the center line and just pull it out yeah, to about there I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this so Y on the keyboard and I'm gonna constrain so we get a perfect alignment just so that these rounded uh, segments are facing the front and then I'm gonna hit H on the keyboard and stretch inward to about right there it doesn't need to be out very far and maybe we'll use stretch and pull it in just a little bit more than what it was and we can go ahead now and delete these not all the back polygons but all the ones that are past that inside part and that looks pretty good and we also also could go back and change this sphere to make it a little more rounded because it does look a little polygonish uh, but we can fix that just by doing a subdivide and I'm hit shift D on the keyboard to bring this up and just go to metaform and that will add extra geometry in there okay and that's pretty much everything for that side of the grip and now we can move on to the other side alright so since we're working on the other side now we're gonna have to switch our background image to the front and we're also gonna have to redo the center to zero on both the Y and the X axis or the Z axis sorry and now I'll line up on this side but if we zoom in our father you can see that uh, the indent we're supposed to be making here sort of is out of the boundary of our polygons that we have just because of that extra little bevel we added in there so we're gonna remove that just by grabbing these polygons on that side of the handle we're working on and just that side and we're gonna cut those and paste them into a new layer and work on them separately and what we can do is select this polygon undo and that's like the wrong tool there just the best thing to do is to merge that back on there that polygon and if you hit shift and the right bracket key it will go ahead and select all the polygons surrounding that polygon so what we can do now is just delete that and set this back up full view and if you see we still kinda have it going inward but we can just make it a little bit smaller 
and it really won't be too big of a deal if it's a little bit smaller but we still had to remove those other polygons just because it was making it a little bit too big and then we'd have to make that section really small and we don't want to have to do that so we'll hit P on the keyboard and now we're also going to have to straighten these out just a little and hit serial key on the keyboard and we selected the polygon in the wrong order so we can just hit F on the keyboard to flip it cut and paste and now we have pretty much the same thing we had before except we need to change this surface so Q on the keyboard and change it to handle grip alright and now we can start a new layer and put this one in the background and we're going to create a disk and we'll make it about right right there we want to bring it right up to the edge get space spacebar to clear that and now we're going to swap the layers which you could also do by hitting the parenthesis key and then we're going to hit shift and R and we're going to slice it on the X axis so click OK and it flipped around our polygon again so we're going to delete our cutting tool select our polygons hit F on the keyboard to fl flip them back into place and we're going to do the same thing on this side now that we did on the other side and that is shift F to smooth shift make sure we're in selection mode right mouse click to make that extrusion and then H for stretch and we're going to pull it in a little to preserve our smoothing and then smooth shift it again stretch it inward and now we can bring it down smooth shift again and bring it down a little more smooth shift again bring it down, oh, making sure we constrain as we bring it down smooth shift one more time and this time just pull it in and now we have a nice indent right here and we could make it go in a little bit deeper and maybe we will, just a little so we can just grab these polygons like that or we could select them in this view and it might be a little bit easier or another way to select is how we did it before where you hold on shift and hit the right bracket key and it'll go around and select all those rings and hit H on the keyboard again and this time we're going to change our turn off symmetry make sure our action center is on mouse and set that up to the end right there and just pull that out and make it go a little bit deeper okay and now we can go ahead and just actually just mirror over this other little kind of screw head type thing we made on the other side and make sure we select the whole thing cut it paste it onto a new layer and then position that where it's supposed to go and hit H on the keyboard go back to selection mode and make it uh, the size it's supposed to be and then T to move and we'll center it uh, in the approximate center or as close as we can to it and I'm also going to need to hit T again and move that so it's overlapping the inside of the cut and we'll take a look and see how that looks and that looks alright we'll take a look with the rest of it on and of course we need to put these back in the same layer so we can merge that but right now that looks okay alright and we also have one more cut we're gonna have to do so I'll start a new layer and I'm gonna put the handle that we're working on right now in the background and we need to make this sort of cut on the top right there and the easiest way to do that 
is to select the disk tool from create and just make actually bring up the numeric and change our size to 24 again back to the default because we don't need as much definition right here and we've got that nice round edge right there so we're going to use the points, hit K on the keyboard to kill those polygons go in and select the points and we can delete those and now we just have those seven right there and we can mirror that over using shift V and now we can select these two sets and mirror them down using shift V again and that lines up pretty good so now we can go ahead and make a polygon out of these points by selecting them in order and then hitting P on the keyboard and now we're going to do the same thing we did before putting the handle in the foreground and that new slice in the background using shift R slicing it on the x-axis and now we have that polygon in there and we can go ahead and shift F to smooth shift right mouse click H on the keyboard make sure we're in selection mode and we're gonna pull it down make it sure we constrain and I'm using the middle mouse button button which can be difficult sometimes to constrain but I'll go ahead and put it about right there to fix our smoothing and smooth shift it again H on the keyboard for stretch and constrain that inward and then also I have to pull it down just a little bit more and now I can hit T to move and move that inward and just do the same thing uh, what I could also do is take that polygon hit B on the keyboard and just go ahead and bevel it and then right mouse click and bevel it again and right mouse click one more time and this time not extruded at all okay and that's looking pretty good uh, the next thing we're going to add now is that silver part to the bottom right here and also start working on all the little pieces we left out so far so first we'll take and just go ahead and cut those layers and paste them and cut and paste them so the handles pieces are on the same layer and now we also need to merge these so we're going to go slice this time we're going to select down the points down the center just because we have sliced our geometry on these main polygons and it'd be a lot more difficult to just cut and paste that I'm on the keyboard to merge and now we have a nice smoothing down here uh, we also might need to edit as you can see right here if you look at the way the polygons are laid out it kinda dips upward and what you can do there is just grab a point and just sort of pull it down a little and you could go along and just edit that a little if you wanted to just to round it out just a little bit more there's one more thing I'm gonna do and that is fix these top points up here which are a little off so I'm gonna turn on symmetry mode go to points mode hit control T for drag and just change this and pull it in and now it's a little more rounded and looks a little bit better and we're having a little bit of a display error right here so I'm going to turn off symmetry select these polygons uh, and that's because we added a slice so what I'm going to do is just take these two polygons and I can merge those and that was because we went and sliced all the way across using the knife tool and that added the extra bit right there so I'm going to merge those polygons together and now we have extra points in here so I can delete those and that gets rid of that problem we had along that back side what I also want to do is go up on top right here and these points I want to use the magnet tool to sort of bring them down a little uh, not too much gonna have to be a little precise about what points we're using with with the magnet actually we can select all those top ones should be fine uh, except the outer ones actually we can constrain so what we're gonna do 
is now hit shift and colon and right mouse click to define our magnet area which is just going to be right here and I'm going to go ahead and throw the barrel in the background and just what I want to do is sort of dip this inward so that it fits in with the barrel but as you notice right here we're not getting as smooth of a dip as I'd like or as cylindrical as I'd like so I hit numeric and what we can do is edit those sliders and as you can see that improves it a little bit and we don't need to dip it down too much just a little bit so about right there should be fine and now we'll take a look and see if that lines up and we have a little bit of polygon uh, distortion in the back right here and what we could do to fix that is go ahead and smooth shift it just grabbing these back polygons and shift F right mouse click T to move uh, H to stretch and just pull it in just a tiny bit just so that we get that a little more smooth a little more geometry in there and that fixed most of our problems that we're having right there there's still a few right here and we can go in and clean those up but we're not going to worry about it right now and now we're going to move on to the little odds and ends of the gun hit S on the keyboard make sure we save it and now we'll move on Okay, we're going to get started on this sort of silver piece that goes along this bottom right here. But before we do that, there's something on the handle that we do need to change. And I'm going to show you what that is just by pulling up the image editor and showing the projection. You can see that on the handle right here, it is a regular screw that is on the handle and not just a, a sphere like we have right here, or a half sphere. So what we're going to do is go ahead and change that really quick so it's more accurate uh, we're just gonna cut what we have right here and paste and take a look and it doesn't look like we're gonna really be able to do anything with what we have right here but we can use this as a template for the actual object uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove that background layer right now so hit D on the keyboard for display go to backdrop BR and none just so we can get that out of the way and I'm gonna create a disk just uh, you create disk and using the middle mouse button to constrain or you can use control and the left mouse button I'm gonna pull up numeric and change this to 48 sides and then I'm gonna go ahead and bring this out alright now we need to select the top polygon and we're going to be splitting these two points right here using control L and splitting these two right here control L it doesn't matter that if you see right here that we're selecting these back points because all we have selected is this front polygon so it's only going to split whatever polygon is selected okay and now we can take each one of these polygons and use the bevel and start defining that area so I'll hit B on the keyboard and we'll just kinda pull it out right mouse click pull it out again and one more time and then uh, one last time with no oh, and it looks like we're gonna have a little trouble with this right here so we're gonna undo that and maybe we'll just leave it the way it is it's going to be smooth, so it doesn't really need to be entirely flat on top anyway. And actually, that would might even take away from the round look of it. We're also going to take this back part and bevel that. Just give a little bit of a bevel right there. Actually, maybe we should make it a little more rounded. So B on the keyboard again, and we'll add that little tiny bit right there. Right mouse click, and then do our inset right there maybe not so much T on the keyboard for move move that in alright we 
just throw that in the foreground layer then. And we can also go ahead and add a few knives. So shift K and we're going to knife it on both sides about right there. And let's take a look. We'll give this a service name. Uh, main body Nerny. Yeah, that looks alright. And if we want to be entirely precise about it, we can go ahead and change the mode to selection, Y to rotate, and move it about right, about right there. And now it's a little more similar to what we actually have on the model. Okay, and so we can cut that and paste that now onto the handle and go ahead and delete that other part we made. Alright, and now we're going to make that silver part and the connectors to connect it to the top up here. So I'm going to bring our background image back <laughs> to the bottom right viewport. So I'm going to hit D on the keyboard for display, go to backdrop, bottom right, and select front and we might need to change that a little, it's a little hard to see we'll just brighten it up a bit enough where we can still see our points but we don't have to worry about not being able to see the previous geometry we have and there's really not much we have to do for this part actually if I change this to the back we can see a little bit more of that curvature and how it's going to look. And we're going to go ahead and change the image then to match up with this side. I think it was 8 that we had last time. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to get an idea of where it's kind of at. Yeah, that should be good. And this piece isn't very complex, so there's really not going to be a lot to it. In the inside, it only goes up so far. Um, probably to about here or so, and then it'll descend backwards. And as far as this inside stuff in here, uh, you could add a polygon going across the top to kind of block off some of that inside, but if you were to properly light the model, when you are rendering, uh, more than likely there's going to be shadows in here and you won't need to worry about the inside right. So we're going to start out by laying out our points for this because that's all we really need to do is uh, lay out a few points just like we did before for the trigger and this other piece right above it. So shift and the plus key or create and points and just start right mouse clicking and laying out points and we really don't have to bring it up that high so I'll start to bring it backward and we also want to add points over here going inside and then maybe just a few to make sure we stay on the outside I'm gonna hit zero on the number pad just to bring this up full view and I use control T for drag and just kinda of fit these points maybe do a temporary control P which will give us our spline so we can kinda see how the points really lay out and that looks pretty good so I'm gonna go to the polygon mode kill that go back to points mode select them in order just as we've always done and hit P on the keyboard to create that polygon uh, now as you can see there's not as much definition maybe as I'd like or maybe as there should be so I'm gonna go and create some more points in here just to lay out a little bit more definition because we don't want it to be too polygonal uh, some area of the models are a little more polygonal than others as far as the boxiness when you zoom in but we don't want the overall model to look bad just because of one part and that should be good so we'll select these in order now and 
and then hit P on the keyboard. And that should suffice. Maybe edit that just a little. And you can mess around with that if you want, get a little little more curve in there, but we're gonna leave it the way it is right now, because it's good for what we need it for. Alright. Okay, now I can use extrude. So shift and E and just constrain and pull this out. Uh, it doesn't have to be entirely out. And we're going to F on the keyboard because we had it facing the wrong direction. As can usually happen with using extrude. And we want to make sure we're as close to center as possible. And if we need to, we can select a few polygons to get a, a guide or not the guide down the center. And just make, oh, undo. Make sure we select every, the whole model if we're going to be using that. And center it. Now we want to make sure that it's coming out on this other side as far as it's supposed to and the same thing with the other side. So I'm going to turn on symmetry and grab this right polygon and it looks like we're not centered. So I'm going to hit turn off symmetry, hit F2 on the keyboard, T for move and I'm going to constrain and pull this over and in this viewport you don't have to worry about constraining just when you're moving down in this viewport and now we can turn on symmetry select that polygon and which selects both polygons and hit T on the keyboard and we can move that out to fit however we need it and I'm using this other piece as a guide and we just want to bring it inside of that line and we could also zoom in on this front viewport and see exactly where it is, but we are going to do a little bit of a bevel, so we want to bring it in a little bit more than is actually needed. And now I'm going to grab that polygon and hit B on the keyboard and just do a quick bevel on it and right mouse click and bring it inward again so that we don't screw up our smoothing on it. And as you can see, up here it looks really good, uh, how it's supposed to, but when we get to the handle, there's a little bit of distortion in there. And to fix that, what we're going to have to do is go into our handle model and sort of pull some points in so that we get a rounded connector. Uh, we could also pull some points off from this, but that would be a little more difficult, and it would be easier just to edit that handle. I'm going to go ahead and knife this really quick. Uh, turn off symmetry, because we're not going to need that anymore. And the reason I knifed it was just to give it a little bit of extra roundness in here. As you can see when I undo and then redo, you can see the difference. and It looks a lot better with the knives. Uh, i got to change this surface name now, so I'm going to hit Q on the keyboard for the Change Surface dialog and we're going to call it handle silver and then go to our surface editor so control F3 or F5 and I want to make sure I grab what is sort of a silver surface right now we'll just grab what we have is the barrel copy that and paste that onto where is it handle silver right there Okay. All right. Now we're gonna go and edit the part of the handle. Just zooming in here. Uh, grab a few polygons. Hit Control A. Oh, maybe not that one. Hit Control A. So we're centered on that point. And we're gonna edit this in. And we're gonna edit this in uh, the perspective view. And hit zero on the keyboard. Change this to wireframe shade. and then I'm going to turn on symmetry and by turning on symmetry it's going to keep these center points uh, directly in the center and it won't move them off to the side when we're dragging so if I try to move them off to the side it won't let me, it'll only let me bring it backward so I'm going to undo and now we might need to edit what looks like that point right there and I don't think it's going to let me do it with wireframe shade mode so I can change it to wireframe 
and then we can move that in uh, just so that when we modify this other point it won't we'll have a little more control over it and then we can pull in that bottom one and we just want to make it so it's a little more round uh, not so so much up here but just a little bit of a lip down here and then we can deselect that and change this back to texture view and that looks a lot better now that silver part's done and we can move on to just whatever we have for the connector up here and you can't really see it in this view but I'll pull up the image editor and you can see there's just that sort of box across there really not too complex of an object but we'll go ahead and model it anyway alright so what we need is just to create a box so you can use shift and X or create and box and it's not it doesn't have to be all the way over because it's just going to be inside the handle and we can pull it out to about right there and this side can be a little wider it doesn't really matter just because it's going to be inside of this part of the handle uh, I'm going to hit control T for drag and just angle that a little and now actually turn off symmetry make sure symmetry isn't on because we had it on from before and now we can go ahead and give it a little bit of a bevel so I'm going to grab all these polygons and zoom in over here in the front view so we can take a look and see how much we're really beveling I hit B on the keyboard and just pull it out a little actually undo it's a little bit too much. Zoom in a little bit farther so we don't don't go out as far. And right mouse click and just a little bit. Just define our smoothing on that object. Okay, and now we need to pull it out so it matches up that part of the handle. And we're gonna need to bring it up as well and inward and I'm going to take a look and see how that looks and I haven't changed the surface on it yet just because I want to be able to see exactly where this object is and if I leave the surface the way it is it'll be a lot easier to see that uh, okay we're going to need to pull it down just a little bit. Move to T on the keyboard and I'm going to pull it out. And then I'm going to use the move tool on these points right here. Hit T and just move those up. So now we have sort of a slant in here not a perfect angle uh, we don't really need a curve just because it's so hidden and I'm gonna take a look and see how that is and that looks pretty good so we can go ahead and give the surface name of main body nernies because it's all pretty much the same surface anyway and I'm just gonna mirror that down the center line and see how that looks on the other side and it's going into the handle on both sides and it looks good alright now I want to start working on the barrel itself uh, as you can see we have a little bit of a um, sort of a open viewport on each side of the barrel if I pull up the front perspective you can see that side it's just a little bit of an inset here and then uh, what we're just going to be doing is modeling a cylinder in the inside to take care of this and it doesn't even have to be a full cylinder all the way around because we can just make uh, certain polygons for that surface name from a bevel or a smooth shift rather and uh, we're going to go ahead and do that right now and I'm going to change our viewport in the back to the front and change this to 0 and 0 and now all we need to do 
is just select the barrel layer and what I want to do now is we have to define which side each part is on so I'm gonna take a look at our scope and using these uh, larger bolts we can tell uh, which side is which and go back to okay so we know it needs to be on the right side so this cut for this angle needs to be on the right side so what I want to do is take and select all these polygons on the right side and just on the right side and I'm gonna use the knife tool now so shift and K and go ahead and knife that right down here and then knife along that angle and it looks like it's sloping down this way but that really that's just the lighting and what we're going to be doing is using these polygons in here and then smooth shifting them inward and what I want to do before we go ahead and do that is actually add another knife uh, down right there and if you ever deselect your polygons and you want to reselect the ones you just had you can undo what you did and then redo it and it will reselect those polygons along with what you undid so I'm just gonna pull that in and this is just to fix our smoothing problem that we're probably gonna have from this undo yeah, it looks like that angle wasn't quite right right there and then I'll do another one on that side and that should take care of any smoothing issues we have and we don't have to go this way because obviously we have several segments if you take a look now now that we added this knife uh, it added some more points along the bottom and we have a little bit of a display error and almost like gaps down the center it kind of threw off our smoothing on that but that's going to be entirely covered up with all of our other pieces especially on top so we really don't need to worry about that alright and now we're just gonna grab a few of those polygons um, right there and just on the one side and I'm gonna hit shift A just to zoom in on that entirely and just that and then maybe just bring in a little and now we're going to be smooth shifting this inward so I'm going to hit shift F right mouse click uh, I'm going to change this mode to selection and I'm going to use the stretch tool now which is H on the keyboard and just constrain and pull it in just a tiny bit and then I'm going to go ahead and smooth shift again right mouse click and then H on the keyboard constrain and pull it in and maybe we want to pull it in a little more over here and then T to move move it inward and as you can see we're getting this nice edge around here and then smooth shift one more time and we can just move it back and it doesn't need to go in that far and instead of actually creating a disk in the inside uh, after deleting these polygons we can just go ahead and take these polygons we have right now and cut them and then paste them and now we get that nice seam and then we can just change the surface name of the polygons so it is like having a separate object in there and that way we don't have to really define a cylinder along the proper edges so uh, Q on the keyboard and we're just gonna call this barrel inside and click OK and now we have a new texture so we're of course gonna have to assign a texture to it so I'm gonna bring up the surface editor and I'm just gonna grab that silver texture for right now and go ahead and paste it on there just so we get our smoothing and it is sort of a whitish looking surface when you look at the picture and actually what I've gone and done when I textured it is I take a diffuse map and if you're wondering why this fractal reflection 
image is always in the image editor. That's because I have the other mod model loaded in and the other one we made which has the surface as a diffuse on it. So since we're not going to be covering texturing I just wanted to note that that can be a good image map to use and that's in the Lightwave content directory under images reflections and you can use that to give kind of a little bit of surface on there to a little unique and a little more interesting alright now we can work on the other side I'm going to D on the keyboard go to backdrop BR and change it to back and now we're going to have to adjust this image of course to fit but we really don't have any reference points right now to adjust this image to so I'm going to come down here and usually to the trigger is the best way to adjust that image map so I'm going to bring up the trigger here and it almost looks like it's already kind of in place but I want to make sure it's about perfect and that's because we don't have that image in the background anymore <laughs> so I'm going to zoom in here and I hit D on the keyboard for display, go to backdrop, bottom right, change it to back. And now we have to move this back into place. And I don't remember what settings we had before, but that looks like it's in place, so that should be good. And we're going to do the same thing to the barrel that we pretty much did to the other side. And go ahead and select these polygons. And now cut right here. And then we're going to make another cut right next to it. And we also want to make a cut over here for this side. And another one right here. And then one right next to it. And now we can go ahead and deselect these polygons and we'll select let's see we need these three right here and then we want to have three on the other side so that looks like that's right we'll deselect the other side because we won't need those polygons and now we'll just go ahead and smooth shift these the same way we did the other ones and we might have to edit a little bit more because of this corner right here but we should get a nice effect so shift and F for a smooth shift, right mouse click, H on the keyboard, make sure we're in selection for the mode, uh, constrain and kind of pull that in. Doesn't need to be too much. Um, if you're noticing here, we're getting a lot of distortion. So, might want to change that just a little bit. Actually, if I undo, and there's an easier way to do this, uh, so what I'm going to do. Let's go and cut these polygons and paste them onto another layer. And now we can't edit these points. These points have to stay exactly where they are, but we can edit the polygon that we're going to be smooth shifting all these ones. So the, the next set we make, we can edit. But these ones, we want to stay the same because we cut it out and we're going to want to paste it in and want the points to match up. But this way, we're not getting an don't have to worry about the other side of the model getting involved. Uh, we could also hide those if you don't know how to hide polygons. Uh, I'll show you how to do that right now. And what you do is just select a set of polygons. Make sure I'm polygon mode. So po set us. <laughs> select a set of polygons, and you can hit the minus key on the keyboard, and that will just hide them. And it looks like it's deleting them, but all it's really doing is hiding them. And you can do that with points as well. And then if you want to give that, bring those back, you can do hit the backslash key, and it will put them right back into your model. So if you wanted to hide the points, you could do that, hide the points in polygons. But I prefer to just cut and paste onto another layer. So I'm only working with just what we need. So I'm going to go ahead and smooth shift that now. And H on the keyboards, pull that inward. And now I want to go ahead and select those points that we have right in here and hit 
H on the keyboard and kind of pull them in from the center. And these points over here we made out a little bit too far. We want to have about an equal edge on there. Zoom in a little and T to move and just move those in. And we also got to have to move these points back. If you notice this one is kind of throwing off this axis now. And remember you're always working in three different views and you're working in 3D so you gotta keep in mind your other viewports. Alright, now we can go and select these polygons the new set we created and now we can smooth shift that again so shift F right mouse click H on the keyboard for stretch and now pull that inward and this time we're gonna hit T and move it in on this other side so we're starting to get our inward tilt and we'll go ahead and we have to edit these points now H on the keyboard and we'll move them in and maybe I'll hit H on the keyboard and kinda or Y on the keyboard to rotate and kinda move those so they're still going sort of rounded and that just looks like it's gonna be okay right there so we're gonna go and select these new polygons shift F right mouse click T to move and this time we're just gonna move it back and then cut and paste and actually we can undo that right now because we have to select them anyway and since we're gonna end up merging these so I'm gonna cut and paste this back onto our barrel layer and now we have to select those set that set of points in there so now we want to make sure we're only selecting the other side because we do have kind of that cut and paste thing going on on the other side so this should be alright now if we deselect this right side and we just want to merge all the points that are similar within this selected set of points. So we'll hit M on the keyboard and it deleted all those points for us. And we can go ahead now and take these polygons Q and barrel inside is what we'll call it. Cut and paste and that takes care of the smoothing on there. Uh, we still have a little bit of smoothing problems right there but something that small we really shouldn't have to worry about too much just because what we have is the type of texture you put on is all about the same and it should take care of most of those problems but if you want you can knife it right there and that'll take care of that and you don't really need to worry about affecting the other side just because that's correct and it's not really going through any major parts and see how that looks so far I'm gonna go ahead and hit S on the keyboard and save what we have And now the next thing we're going to be doing is adding a little detail right there. We also have like sort of a latch on this side and this back part. And then there's a little bit, a little piece that will go down here and anything else that we haven't modeled yet. And then we'll be finished. Okay, it's time to put the back piece on the back of the gun and then do our finishing touches uh, there's one thing we're going to do on the handle really quick and that is we want to make sure that this polygon is set to a different texture or different surface name than the rest of the handle uh, or the main part of the handle instead of the grip and that's because that's not going to have that grip texture on it so we're going to select this polygon right here and then we're going to hold down shift and hit the right bracket key to select the outer ring of polygons and we'll hit Q to bring up our change surface dialog and we're going to change that to handle and 
we also need to do the same thing to this piece right here and shift and the right bracket key so we can change the surface on that and do it all the way up to maybe not there because this is going to be uh, not grip so change texture on that and then we'll also grab this bolt right here and we'll change that to handle okay and now we're gonna go around to the other side of the model and right here we have a piece that needs to get modeled still and if we take a look at the perspective view uh, actually the back perspective view you can see that little piece right there and it's nothing special but we'll throw that on right now it'd be quite easy uh, we'll cut and paste everything we modeled in the last video onto the handle or uh, the trigger section and now we're only working with three layers we can keep it all nice and separate and kinda of from this point on uh, except this back piece right here we'll bring the uh, image back for that but we're gonna remove the background image right now because we're pretty much going to be relying on the perspective view so we'll remove that and now we'll just base it off the perspective view of how to model these extra little pieces in here just so we don't have anything getting in the way I'm going to take a look at that back perspective view again and you can see it's pretty much just a cylinder that slightly goes into the into the gun so all we have to do is use the disk tool and just want to make sure we're on the right side here and we are and we're just going to create a disk going about right here okay and It's not quite a perfect disc. There is a little bit of difference in there, so we might just use the magnet tool just to kind of bring it out a little. And that's shift and colon, and we can just actually we'll deselect. Try that again. Make sure we right mouse click and pull out our area first. And that's why we're getting those little display problems. And actually we're doing this on the wrong side. Select these top points and shift and colon. Right mouse click and draw out our affecting area. And then we'll pull this over here. We just use magnet to pull that in. Now this doesn't really need to be perfect on this inside just because you won't see that but we do want to get a little bit of a lip on there and we also want to make sure that this is appropriately rounded okay all we need to do now is add a bevel on the top and bottom polygons so hit B on the keyboard just selecting the polygons and we'll just put a little bevel on there right now right mouse click make another one right mouse click again and it looks like we're getting a little bit of distortion up there so I'm going to undo that and we can go in and manually edit that actually and because we're going to need to do it for the section right there so we're going to select these points right here hit shift A well actually we need to do each set at a time so we can get in here and then you can deselect them and just move those out of the way so that 
they're not overlapping anymore and we shouldn't have any distortion problems and we don't and now we'll go ahead and select those polygons zoom in B on the keyboard and just bevel that inward just a little not raising it up or down at all and that way it stays flat we'll go ahead and add our extra knives so shift in K and just draw out a knife on each side and that will add a nice little rounded edge to it hit S on the keyboard just to save where we're at right now and you're going to want to push S on the keyboard as often as you can uh, whenever you can remember to uh, you can also go to the hub and program Lightwave to save automatically but we're not going to worry about that right now and maybe it needs just to be rotated just a little and we'll take a look at that and now we'll take a look at our back perspective again and you can see it's actually right we're going to have to move that over set it at the end so T on the keyboard and we'll just move that over and now take a look and see how it alright that looks pretty good and now we can move on to our back section and for this we're going to need to bring our image reference back so hit D on the keyboard for display go to backdrop BR and we're just going to load the front in change our center and the back part's pretty simple it's just uh, you won't be able to really tell how it looks without looking at the perspective uh, maybe we'll pull it up again you can take a look it's just pretty much a cylinder and then some extrusions which we can do with just a bevel or smooth shift pulling out these bottom sections and we also need to add this bottom part down here uh, with sort of a latch on it and then one on the more open side of the handle uh, next to the trigger and then we'll be finished so we'll start a new layer and we're gonna put everything else in the background layer for right now and maybe we need to lighten up that background image a little so just go back to those display properties and we can brighten it up just so we can kinda see we'll keep the contrast down though so it looks a little more washed out and the points won't entirely blend in alright now we're gonna use the disk tool and we want to start from about what looks like the center of the cylinder for the barrel and we just want to bring it up as high up here and down here so that's equal and we'll just pull this out and about right there now I hit N on the keyboard to bring up our numeric options and give the sides change that to 48 and then I can hit spacebar to clear that and now we have the main portion of that back section and we'll just start out on this side over here and we're gonna use bevel and we're just gonna add a bevel going into this other section so B on the keyboard for bevel and we just want to right mouse click and move it in and right mouse click and move it in and we also want to knife this section down here but before we do that we want to make sure we do our extrusions which we're gonna have uh, around right there actually maybe a little bit higher but we're gonna bevel this back section now before we move on to that so B on the keyboard again and we're just gonna move it in right mouse click and move it in some more just so we get a nice round edge on there and for that too we'll also wait to do and maybe we'll stretch it out just a little so it's a little more round the H for the stretch tool uh, we're gonna wait though to do these bevels until that part's done and if you notice on the back too we also have uh, sort of like a belt clip and there's an easy way to model that and I want to keep our pieces pretty much connected so what I'm gonna do is just take this back polygon we have here 
and shift and F for a smooth shift and right mouse click make sure our mode is set to selection and it is and then hit H on the keyboard for stretch uh, we want to constrain that now and pull it in to a little bit beyond where that sort of cylinder is for the belt clip uh, and then there's pretty much just a cylinder with a hole in it and a ring going through it so now we have this portion right here and we're gonna right mouse click again or well, actually first we have to go to <laughs> shift F and right mouse click and then H again and just bring it a little a little and that's gonna correct our smoothing and then we'll shift F again right mouse click H on the keyboard for stretch and then constrain and we just want to pull it out a little and then shift F right mouse click T to move and we're gonna move that out to about right there and then shift F again right mouse click H on the keyboard constrain it T on the keyboard to move it out and actually we just bevel it now and zoom into that so we can make sure it's nice and round and then right mouse click and bevel it one more time but this time don't bring it out this way or this way and now we have a flat surface right there because of that I also want to go ahead and knife this so shift K we're gonna knife it right here and as you can see that made that highlight a little more prominent and we'll knife it right here too and that also makes that roundness a little bit better looking just so you can see it and as far as the ring goes you really can't tell what the shape is um, judging by uh, previous models I've seen uh, for this style and from this film I'm gonna make the assumption that they're more of a triangular type uh, attachment so we don't really have a reference for that but we'll go ahead and just model it just sort of winging it and what I'm gonna do for that is use a disk I'll create disk and just make some points and on the keyboard we're gonna set this back to 24 and then hit space on the keyboard and K on the keyboard to kill our polygon and I'm just using stretch right now to pull it in and we're just going to be using the corners right here uh, so H again I'm just going to move it in a little bit more because we don't need it as big as we had it uh, actually maybe just a little bit bigger and we'll zoom into this now and go ahead and delete points uh, about right here should be good and T on the keyboard for move and right there and now we're going to use mirror and mirror it down the center because we're going to be having the ring going like this so it's not actually a ring it's triangular but it's pretty much the same concept and we're going to just copy and paste that those points right there and then rotate them T and the keyboard to move and we'll pull it in about here and now we don't have the same amount of points on both sides it's a little bit off so I want to go ahead and figure out which point we need to delete and it looks like it's going to be this point right here which means we're going to have to rotate this a little bit more and T on the keyboard to center it or to move and center it on the center line right here and we'll move it down just a little bit more and that's zero on the keyboard on the numeric uh, the number pad to pull it up full view select all of our points in order hit P on the keyboard to create a polygon and I'm just doing that Let's see how that looks, I'm going to undo that and then control O to make a closed curve and now if you take a look at this curve right here our starting point 
of the curve is right here and we don't want that because we're going to be using a rail extrude so the best thing to do is now knife it right down the center and actually I don't think that did it uh, so we're going to kill this and since we can't knife it to create that point because you can't knife a spline um, we're going to take this point right here copy and paste constrain and move it over to that center and this is just so we can keep our polygon that we're going to be extruding uh, perpendicular to the spline and I'll show you that in a sec so we'll st start with this point right here and go ahead and select all the other ones in order and then hit control O and if we go to the polygon mode now you can see our starting point is right here and it'll be a lot easier to make our cylinder polygon perpendicular so we'll just pull these up in the background layer uh, the newly created polygon and that little section we modeled already and go ahead and make a disk about right there T on the keyboard to move that and we can center that or as close center as possible uh, we could also do a set value uh, control V or just V on the keyboard depending on your specifications keyboard shortcuts and zero on the X and now we know it's perfectly centered and we'll go ahead and take a look at this and that should be alright so we'll put our new disk in the foreground and the spline in the background layer and hit control R and we want to change this to knots make sure this is selected and 20 we want to up it to 25 and now we're going to need to push F on the keyboard to flip it because we had our polygon facing the wrong way and we're going to see how that looks with that section right there have to move it out and that looks pretty good you could make a round one if you wanted but with some of the other designs I've seen from the film I, at least from the earlier films that's kind of how the clips look and maybe it needs to be a little bit bigger but I just wanted to show you the idea of how to add on that little piece right there and we don't need to worry about making a a boolean subtract and actually making a hole in here because that's really going to throw off our smoothing on there and if we just put it through it'll look fine and we really don't have to worry about that too much alright now we can start bringing down our sections for these sort of wings type pieces that we have I'm going to turn on symmetry mode right now and we're going to select our polygons that we're going to be using for sort of wing sections and it looks like these ones should be good and we're going to go ahead and smooth shift them so shift F right mouse click T to move and move them out and we need to move them back a little and then I'm just going to use H on the keyboard for a stretch and go ahead and just stretch it to that center which is going to make it entirely straight and then we can go ahead and rotate it down but first I'm going to undo that we can use H again for stretch and I just want to make it not as wide and then Y to rotate and we'll kind of bring these out maybe not so much and we also need H again and stretch on this other axis and then T and move it over and maybe they don't go out as far and it's kind of hard to tell how far they go out so you just gotta take a look at pretty much the perspective view to see how far they really go out and now what we're gonna do is turn off symmetry actually no we can leave it on for right now and go ahead 
and these polygons right here, we can't bevel to put an edge on because we want to make this sort of smooth on the ends right here. So we're going to smooth shift it and we don't really need to worry about this edge right here because we're going to make such a small smooth shift just to add an accent that we it won't really be conflicting with that edge right there. So shift F, right mouse click, T to move it out and then we're going to use H to stretch and just pull it in a little bit and then move it into position and as you can see it's overlapping in some areas so control T and we'll just go ahead and move that in and make a little bit of a smoothing issue right here but we can grab those points and move them in about right there and that takes care of that and that looks a little weird right there but the texture will be mostly getting rid of that if you do texture it uh, what I would recommend is using a bump map and setting it to a very very small amount and then what you can do uh, if you do like point zero 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 one for the size of the bump map on all axes it'll give you a very fine grain along the entire object which is more which you should do for pretty much all metal textures so I'm gonna grab these two polygons now hit B on the keyboard and just bevel that in and that adds our edge right here the accent and we're gonna take our end polygons now and smooth shift those so shift F right mouse click then H to stretch it inward and then Y because we have to rotate it back into position and that looks alright and this is kind of a weird shaped object so it's a little difficult to get it perfect without using a uh, different modeling technique uh, but po we're doing a polygonal modeling right now so it should be pretty good for that. Uh, we also want to add some knives, but down these sections right here. But because it's slanted, we're going to use Bandsaw Pro. So we just want to select our turn off symmetry, and we have the majority of our polygon selected. And now we can go to uh, multiply. Bandsaw Pro and I'll automatically split it on the center but we turn on the numeric and this is actually the old thing we had right before and actually that's gonna be okay I'll add that center line but that's alright close that spacebar and that took care of a lot of our smoothing issues along these sections now if you take a look at the perspective view there's also a little cutout on each side and it's not a major cutout it's just a small little one but what we're gonna do to make that is create a disk and 24 points should be fine for the amount of sides and then we're gonna kill that so K on the keyboard to get rid of those polygons and keep the points and then delete these points right here and grab these two copy and paste them T to move and just move them out. And we'll go ahead then and make a polygon out of that. Shift E for extrude and just pull it down. And actually H we could pull it and make it a little bit bigger. Because this is just going to be a cutting tool so certain sizes don't matter. And now Shift H for the size tool and we can size it down just a little bit more because we just want to make a small cut right here and now I can use H on the, or Y on the keyboard for rotate and we're gonna rotate this so that line is equal and it'd be parallel to this line right here and we're gonna pull it in just a little not too much and we 
just want to make sure we're cutting it just a little and constrain and kind of pull it over a little more and maybe a little less and now shift V for mirror and we're gonna mirror it right down that center so that way we have the cutting tool on both sides and we'll go ahead put this in the foreground layer and put our cutting tools in the background shift B on the keyboard for subtract and now we have our cuts and we're gonna go ahead and leave these cuts uh, unmerged because with an object uh, this complex or kinda with this shape it's gonna be difficult to get our smoothing correct so if we leave it just cut uh, cut out and not worry about merging it we really, really don't have to worry about taking care of the smoothing and it should look okay when we render it so now I can delete this spline we have from before and delete our cutting tool I'm gonna cut this ring and paste it into here and I can cut this whole object section and we're gonna paste that onto the barrel and we'll take a look and see how it it all is coming together and it's looking pretty good we're almost done uh, we want to add now pretty much there's just a little box we gotta add down here and then that kind of latch right here so we'll start a new layer actually what do we have in here now uh, we can go ahead and cut this other piece we made before and paste that onto the barrel and we'll start a new layer and we just want to go to the back of the gun and this is pretty much just a simple box so create a box and we want to make sure that it's equal on both sides so we'll get this kind of crosshair looking thing in the center and it's not very wide it's just a little bit of extra detail and we can p leave it about right there and then a B on the keyboard for bevel actually first we'll go ahead and select all these polygons and right bracket key to select connected and then B for bevel and we'll just go ahead and bevel it like we have before and now we just have this extra little box and we want to hit T on the keyboard and we're actually going to bring it in so it's not totally intersecting with that new part we made in back and you might want to add a little more detail to that but we're going to leave it the way it is because there's really a whole not not a lot of detail for that and now we need to model this little latch we have in the back right here and I'm going to show you that on the perspective view uh, the back perspective view and you can see it's just a little latch right there and what we're going to do for that is open a new layer and we're going to zoom in here and it's about right here but we might want to change our backdrop image so D for bring up a display backdrop bottom right and set that to back and that's just so we can see exactly where it's at and we'll also need to move our image around to match up and if you want to you could go into a photo editing program and match these up so you don't have to keep changing them in the display mode okay and this is a pretty simple object so we'll just go ahead and first model a ball and we'll squish it in a little and T on the keyboard to move it out and we want to make sure we're going to take a look in the perspective view to see if it matches up and goes against the other object so we just need to move it in so it's intersecting that other piece so we'll grab these back points right here and just move that in 
and take a look here. Okay. And we also need to move out that front part. So we'll grab those points, T on the keyboard, to move those out. Just because it will be extending farther. Undo. Make sure we're constraining and pulling them out. Because this piece we're going to have going over this uh, piece right along here. So we need to make sure we have enough room to model that. And it looks like we we can bring it in a little bit more. And we'll go ahead and knife this down here to correct our smoothing. Actually undo that and make it out just a little bit farther. Because we don't want too much of a seam in there. And now we'll just do this real quick method. And that is grabbing these polygons and actually we can go ahead and knife uh, one down the center of where we know that starting point of the inside so this line right here is the set of polygons right here so we can knife it right there and just grab a few polygons and let's see that should be good so we can just grab those four and now smooth shift it so shift F right mouse click T to move it and we're just gonna bring it in a little because we wanna have a little bit of a highlight and then shift F again right mouse click T to move it up H and we can bring it in just a little bit more again and then shift F again, right mouse click, and T to move it. Uh, and now if we look at the length of it, it's kind of long. So we'll move it up to about there. And we're going to have to do a little bit of editing on this. And we might want to bring these sides down. So we could grab these two polygons right here and H on the keyboard and just move those in. And that gives us more of a rounded look. And this end part right here, we're going to want to make it so it's sort of round looking. And before I do that, I'm going to hit H on the keyboard and move them in. And just stretch it to the center so that we have perfectly flat on the end. It's a lot easier to work with. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Shift Z on the keyboard and make that one polygon to merge it. And then B on the keyboard to bevel. And we can go ahead and just make that rounder. And that doesn't need to be very high res. Uh, we might also want to take and stretch these in just a little because it might be a little large it's kinda wide so we can use stretch and kinda pull that in and if you want you could just start with two polygons instead of having to go in and stretch that But now we want to go ahead and match this up with the actual image reference so Y on the keyboard and we're gonna set this to mouse mode and make sure we place the cursor in the center of that sphere and we can just rotate it over and we'll take a look and zero on the number pad bring this up full screen and now we've got that little sort of latch on there and like I said you could also add a little bit of extra detail in here uh, you could, I believe there is a latch, a little small latch, kind of like this one on the side right here. You could just copy and paste this one over and put it on there. Or just draw out a few points and model it to however it looks in the perspective view. And there's also, if you look at one of the images, there's a small little knob right here. So you could also just take this little sphere right here and paste it on there. Or grab another knob. But we're not really not going to worry about that because we pretty much covered all the aspects, all the major aspects of modeling and 
our gun is now complete. We'll hit S on the keyboard and make sure we save it. And we hope you enjoyed the tutorial and learned something about advanced polygonal modeling.